Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small, just a teeny, little tiny, small law firm in central Minnesota. And with me today is a very special guest. This is Coach Red Pill. Hey, buddy, how's it going? It's going great, man. How's it going with you? Uh, it's a never-ending disaster, but in the best way. <laughs> oh, I don't know oh. if that I don't know if that adequately describes it, but that's uh, that's what we've got. That's what we've got. No, it would be much worse if we were a train wreck going, you know, going off a cliff in a bad way. Then, yeah. Come on, this, this this is not Amtrak here. This is not Amtrak. <laughs> we don't we don't drive this train off of cliffs uh, nearly <laughs> as often. Um, <laughs> well, hey man, welcome to the show. Uh, for people watching at home, we have we have an agenda, a nefarious capitalist, right wing, alt right, uh, racist, sexist, but also a social justice homophobic. agenda and homophobic. Yes, we have all of the all of the worst and best stuff combined into one ultra agenda, and that is to talk about culture. We're going to talk about. Um, being men, I guess. We'll talk about manhood, yeah. culture, manhood. And uh, and then we're going to talk uh, in a little bit. In a little bit, we're going to talk about a novel written by Coach. I will direct you to check out the Indiegogo, which is already, it's linked in the description, but we're going to talk about it a little more as we uh, as we get rolling here. And then, um, and if you guys are interested in it, you can certainly check it out. And then uh, then we'll go back to just talking and, and uh, chilling and Shilling and chilling, shilling, shanking, chilling, I don't, shilling, whatever, whatever we do. <laughs> right. And uh, we'll be taking questions from the audience. And with that in mind, I want to read a couple really quick super chats. Um, one in particular, because I've got to uh, I've got to make sure we get this thing out of the way. Um, let's see. Is it in my thing? It's not in my thing. <laughs> uh one second i've i've got it over here though these were before the stream um first solo beverly says will you read ron's complaint on stream when ron's complaint comes in if if he's not lying and he actually reported me to the ethics board i will definitely read it on stream and i will i will laugh all the way to the dismissal um al this is the one that i wanted to get to al says ralph needs you him and Andy got into a dispute after a prank. Ralph got mad and Andy curled in a ball. Not a good look for the undefeated. But cops were called and no one, nobody knows what's going on. Um, I want to I want to get this at the onset. Coach and I aren't here tonight to talk about the drama between uh, Ethan Ralph, Andy Worski, or either of those guys and Coach. That's a periphery event. We're not interested in it tonight. So um, I I have a policy of reading every super chat. So I will politely read your question but if you're looking for like answers and deep dives into it it's not the stream for you tonight so um so yeah i, I just don't want to falsely encourage people to donate about that because it's that's those questions are probably not going to really be addressed in any substantive manner tonight but i gotta say uh as for manner. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as for as for ralph needing me ralph knows where to find me that's that's what I got to say about that. Uh, and then Amtank, which is not Amtrak either, so that train is still on the rails, says sub PewDiePie. And certainly we do want to sub to PewDiePie because India is a made up country uh, that was created by 4chan. I'm 100 percent convinced of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. If, if 4chan says it's true, then it is true. Well, what I, can I say. I don't know that for no, I think 4chan's in on it. They haven't said that they made up India, but the Bob's and Vagine meme is too funny <laughs> and it happens too frequently with real people from India and Pakistan that I I'm convinced that that part of the world doesn't actually exist. I think the flat earth is real and the, the bottom side of the earth is fake. Uh, even well, you though think the flat earth is real, you think the flat earth, it is real. What the hell is the matter with you? <laughs> did you just it's say, flat. Flat did, is you, a pancake. did you just say Israel on my stream? Do you know where you no. are? <laughs> 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 all right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so, to kind of kick this to kind of kick this off um we were talking just a little bit before before the stream because uh you you mentioned to me 
that uh, you want to talk about culture. And that's that's what your channel, I mean, your channel talks a lot about culture, right? Like that's kind of the focus. Is that is that accurate? Um, well, no, it, it, the, the kind of content, I mean, yes, it, I do. But I also, what I'm interested in is see uh, guys today, they, they don't have a clue about how to be men. They don't understand conceptually what it is to be a man. And, and, and my concept is it's very simple. It's, it's not complicated. It's the ability to control your emotions, to, to set them aside and use your, your, your reason, acquired knowledge and your experience to dictate your actions, to not be swayed by your fight or flight response. That's the epitome of what it is to be a man. And if you think about it, it's the, the quality that no others because every mammal on this earth is is controlled by fight or flight response, you know, uh, which makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. But human beings, and specifically men, we can control that fight or flight response. We can control our irrational impulses. And and how often do you do that? How often do you like, for instance, you you were at law school, right? And I'm sure a lot of the things that you were studying were boring as all get out. And you just ground it out. You know, you just kept on studying, even though you were bored and you felt like doing other things. But you recognize that, you know, the future would be beneficial to you if you studied. And so you did so. Right. And well, that, I mean, that's just a quote. don't don't uh -huh. put don't don't put too many. Uh, <laughs> don't put too much emphasis on how much I studied. And <laughs> we, <don't, laughs> we don't want any misrepresentations here. I slept through a class or two or ten um so yeah we don't get the, we don't want to get the wrong idea that you're like a like a like a really studious guy no those are the nerds of law school right no we have we were the chads of law school uh, oh you don't okay. want to get That's how we're playing you don't want to be <laughs> sure you don't want to be too you don't want to be too smart in law school and get too good at grades i mean that would be silly uh no um no i i got get the job done right that was uh that was my goal because um I, I had uh, I had several children. Law school was two hours away from my house. I had to spend a lot of time away from my family to do this. So uh, if we're we're talking um, learn the material, get it right, and then spend as little time as possible outside of that because uh, I'm, I wasn't I wasn't 22 years old with no uh, employment and no responsibilities. Um, going into law school straight out of college, I just didn't have that ability to to do that. So my oh, my I focus was elsewhere. Yeah, no, no, I I, I was a non. I, I was under the impression that you'd gone to law school right out of college. Oh no, no, I worked for. Uh, let's see, I worked for several banks um, prior to that. I I was out of college for hmm eight uh, eight nine years before I went to before I went to law school. So. Um, oh wow! Yeah, okay. so it was uh, maybe even longer. Gosh, I'm so I'm so old sometimes when I think about it. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, I I spent a good amount of time in the professional world, and I would recommend I would actually want any lawyer to have that experience because I can't imagine uh, someone who goes to college and then goes to law school and then gets out of law school at like 25 and is supposed to help someone through a divorce or help a business through a merger um, when they've never done that. They've never done anything yeah. like it. So that's my personal philosophy. I'm not saying that they are not good lawyers. There sure sure are many good lawyers who do that path. But for me, I, th I thought that that personal experience in uh, several different professional workplaces, hating life and hating jobs, enjoying life and enjoying jobs was really, really critical to sculpting me as a as an attorney. But yeah, well, something similar happened to me insofar as college is concerned, because I went to college when I was 22 and uh, 23, actually. And yeah, I had my shit a lot more together. I knew exactly what I was doing. And so I was a lot more focused in my studies. I wasn't wasting time taking random courses with no direction. Right. And and, uh, and it was much, much more beneficial because uh, the years before uh, going to college, I worked as an English teacher, English as a second language and uh, around Latin America. I was in Chile and uh, Bolivia and Peru. And, and it was a really, really good. It was a maturing process. And so like you, when I went to finally get my higher education, I, I was a lot more focused and much more disciplined and I knew what I wanted. And sure. so I, I assume the same happened to you with, with law school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I
Yeah, I had uh, I had once I was going when I was in undergrad, I had no I was a writing major and just uh, all sorts of <laughs> I had no plan for life at all. I was going to just get out and write books and movies and and make millions of dollars and get paid in Lamborghinis. But uh, that that, of course, <laughs> that doesn't actually work that way. And so then I, I got out and was working. And and by the time I went to, to law school, it was like, OK, uh, I need I need to do this because I can do this wherever I go, wherever I take my family. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll always need a lawyer uh, to chase an ambulance. Um, so that's uh, true. that's Very where true. that was. Uh, but OK, so your um, your channel is not just about culture. It's about being it's about being a man and what that what that means to you and, and how to well, help. Yeah. And how to help uh, guys? Yeah, it's like, very like, like for instance. The, well, I, mm -hmm. I was going to say it's very Randian. Your definition of of man is uh, very Randian, uh, like Ayn Rand. Well, I I I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't know because I actually haven't gotten around to reading Ayn Rand. You know, I, I sort of like uh, missed out on that on that phase in life. Or or you know, I was in Chile at the time. And uh, quite frankly, at that age, you know, most guys read it when they're like 16 or something, 17. And at that time, I was just full on chasing girls. I was just uh, girl crazy. And so I, uh, you know, I, I didn't read that much. I started reading a lot more when I was in my 20s. But by that time, I was reading heavier literature. And so I missed out on the Ayn Rand phase. But uh, my approach has always been pragmatic. And like, for instance, like in, in, in today's video that I posted, it's called Understand Your Laziness. And it's about that. It's about uh, you know, understand the source of your laziness and what it is and how you can control it. Because ultimately, laziness comes from the feeling of boredom and ennui of the work that you're supposed to be doing. And you have to set that feeling aside, but also talk about the issue that sometimes it's different from procrastination. And th the point I'm trying to make is that, see, so many of my audience, they they are, um, I, I don't want to use the word loss in a, lost in a pejorative sense, but they they feel untethered. They don't know where to go. And, and they don't have anybody telling them how to act. And so they wind up uh, being, or, or, or many men, not my, not my audience, thankfully, but a lot of men wind up being these uh, beta soy boys who cater to the whims of whoever barks at them the loudest. And it's kind of sad because they, they don't seem to have any kind of independence because they haven't been taught how to be independent. And, and it's... Uh, it, it, it's you know, this fashion of being the soy boy with the open mouth, I'm not going to do that open mouth grin, but you know the one I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah. When they open their mouth so wide, you know? I'll tell you something. Every time I see a guy do that, I have this flashback of the end of most pornographic movies where you have the actress opening up her mouth wide to receive uh, the ejaculate of the male pornographic actor, right? That's what I think every time. I think it's disturbing and disgusting. These men are acting so passive and so um, they've surrendered any kind of agency, any kind of autonomy because it's the fashion nowadays. And and it, it, and the women are, are so demanding. No, it's not even that they're demanding. They're bitchy. And, and if you show any kind of independence, the women run screaming and say – Oh, sexual assault, sexual harassment. Oh, he's uh, creepy. You know, that's the that's the other word, the passive aggressive word that I hate. They're creepy because the guy is being a man, because the guy is being, you know, he's got balls and is acting forthrightly and and directly. And they say it's creepy. I, I hate that. I despise that. Did and it's you, an attitude that's in society. I, I want to I want to get something clear real quick though. Did you say that your audience is full of soy boys? Because that's no, oh, no. Okay. I I thought I heard no, that and I was I, like, wait I, a minute, no. that doesn't sound right. No. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. My audience, I love my audience. They're great guys, and I had the chance to meet them when I was in New York back in January. Lovely guys. I mean, just just terrific young men. And and the thing is, see, what I recognize is that they need and they want direction. They, they want somebody to help them out. And so that's the kind of content that I make because I've said this multiple times. See, uh, I'm 51. And is four years old. And so by the time he's in his late 20s, early 30s, I'll likely be dead. You know, I mean, uh, you know, or, or a doddering old fool, right? One or the other. And so I figure that now I have this space in my life, this time in my life where I have a lot of free time on my hands. And, sure. uh, you know, everything is taken care of, you know, financially speaking. And so I can afford the luxury of doing these YouTube videos. 
And and that was the point of the channel when I started it. And for the longest time, you know, the the channel had, you know, uh, uh, when I, it took me like three, four months to break subscribers, and I was putting out content, you know, just about every day. And and the the idea of the content is so that my kid can see it when I'm either not around or or just too senile to make any sense, right? To give him life lessons, the life lessons that had I been a younger father, I would have given him, right? Sure. And uh, a lot of people seem to have latched onto this content, and I'm very grateful to my audience. I've I've been very fortunate, and uh, and I wish I could say it's because my content is so great, but you know, like for the longest time, for the first 15 months of my channel. I had relatively few subscribers. I had uh, under 15,000 subscribers at my peak. Right. But then in June, I think, in, in June of 18 or so, the YouTube algorithm changed and all of a sudden fell in love with me. I was uh, the YouTube algorithm's new best friend. And now I have uh, like 100 and some thousand subscribers, which is crazy. Yeah, that's and, wild. Uh, you know, I'm gaining about 500 subscribers a day and you know 50,000 views a day and and I wish I could say it's because I'm I'm so brilliant as a YouTuber but it's just luck you know <laughs> and so the smart thing as far as I'm yeah I mean you got to recognize it. it's just luck that the algorithm likes you and so from my point of view the the thing that I'm doing is just doing the same old content the things that I think are important and I don't really care if I have a huge audience or not what's important is the content and uh, and it's very satisfying yeah sure um, okay, so let's uh, let's talk then about about that. Uh, you've you've said a couple things that I want to talk about Vic Mignogna just a little bit with you. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think I think you might be able to uh, offer your perspective um, on this situation. And uh, so Vic is a voice actor in the anime community, and um, and Vic uh, he, he very a very popular voice actor. He's been around for twenty years. Uh, doing this stuff. He's voiced some very major characters. Um, just recently, he voiced Broly, the title character in Dragon Ball Super Broly, which did $100 million as an anime uh, dub. Ow. Right, which is crazy, crazy to yeah. think about. But uh, anyway, so he gets he gets basically Me Too'd off of, uh, off of the earth, um, right? Like he's He's disinvited from conventions. He's shut down from his uh, he's shut down from his voice acting gigs. And it's all based on, uh, of course, these allegations that are nebulous. Um, they're old. There's no evidence uh, that's been provided anyway. If there is evidence, the, there's none provided. And of course, it's it's then is there it, victims. Are there any victims? The victims. OK, there's two classes of victims. Um, the one class, which I call the completely uncredible victim, would be uh, they're anonymous people on Twitter who say something like either I or my friend at some convention at some point in the past that like they don't say the convention. They don't say what year it was even. They don't really have any details. They say, uh, talk to Vic. And at the time, everything was great. He gave us a hug. But now that I look back on it, it's creepy. That that word, that <laughs> trigger word, right? That you mentioned. I and I'll I'll add in yeah. gross and I'll add in yikes. These are words that are being destroyed by Twitter. Creepy, gross, and yikes. Um yeah. but uh yeah, so it's some combination of creepy or gross, or I felt uncom or I feel uncomfortable now looking back. So that's the first category of a victim. And then the second okay. category, I, I put them at a at, I put them at a somewhat credible victim only because they're identifiable. So you've got okay, uh, sure. fellow voice actresses. There are two of them. And then there's one. Uh, well, I've been calling her an E thought because um, they just don't respond well to ridicule. And uh, that makes <laughs> me laugh. Uh, but an E thought yeah. a, a a professional cosplayer who can't pay the rent uh, by the name of Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Pridemore. Um, you know, so there's, there's two voice actresses and then this professional cosplayer who have come out with all very similar stories and I'll recount the story to you, uh, for it's, it's the same shockingly similar amongst all three. And it's that, uh, mm. he, he met them in some public place. Uh, he grabbed, you don't remember, of course. Well, no, the, they'll, they'll tell you where, uh, well, one of them oh, will okay. tell you where it was. It was, uh, Jamie Markey is one of them. And she says it was in the lobby of Funimation Studios. So in the okay. lobby of an office building in Dallas, Texas, 
which is going to have people, you know, receptionists, probably multiple reception desks, security, people walking oh, wait, in and out. And sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I haven't been following this thing closely, except in so far as you've been talking about it because I watch your show. Sure. So Funimation is the company that hired Vic. Is that correct? Yeah. Funimation is a, is a English dubbing voice acting studio and uh, they have independent contractors um, basically 1099 they're the 1099 workers for uh, to do these voice acting roles so Vic is one of those and he's been with them for probably 15 years uh, okay. Monica Rial Jamie Markey are both Funimation employees I think 15 years and 10 years respectively roughly uh, so we're talking all of these are veteran uh, veteran employees of the same company and have been working together although they mm -hmm. they kind of record separately like they'll record from home a lot of times or from sure. a studio they don't actually interact with each other as much as it may seem in the traditional right. co-worker sense but uh yeah. so yeah they're they're all employed by funimation studios and um so in the lobby and of funimation studios so they're they're both there for business they see each other they probably haven't seen each other in months since some convention where they were at the same time and uh Jamie Markey says he grabbed her hair, like by the by the roots, kind of tugged her in close, whispered something sexual into her ear that she can't remember. And then she probably she she doesn't know how she got out of his rapacious grasp, but uh, she imagines it was some sort of get the F off me uh, sort of retort from her. Although she doesn't remember what he said. She doesn't remember what she said, but it was uh, this this theme like, that you find. Is the hair pull? Let, let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me get this straight, just to clarify. So, in the lobby of his employer, his main employer, I take it, or one of his main uh, clients, right? He grabs in a sexually, uh, a sexually assaultish kind of way, right? This woman uh, whispers sweet, sexy, disturbing nothing things in her ear that she can't recall. And uh, and she probably said, get the fuck away from me in the middle of this lobby with all of these people. And he was still employed and nobody said anything at the time, even though there were probably receptionists and security people and God knows what. And I take it that at the time she did not report this to Fund Funimation HR as she was employed by Funimation. Oh. Of course sure, not. No, she was she was terrified by his power in the industry. Uh <laughs> You know, I, everybody's terrified of a random voice actor's power in the industry. And now, don't get me wrong. He's a very popular voice actor, but he has no sure. directing authority. He has no casting authority. He doesn't make uh, he doesn't have influence over Funimation's casting decisions or even he doesn't have influence over the licensing of these products. The way that as far as I can tell, the way this industry really works is that um, Japan Japan picks a production house and then dictates just about everything. Uh, sure. Just about it's property everything. property after all. Yeah. And, and so these guys, uh, it's, they, they don't seem to be good at business and they just kind of uh, lap up whatever Japan sends their way and then contract it out to, uh, to some voice actors who get paid. I mean, their, their studio pay up until recently was 50, uh -huh. 50 bucks an hour. Um, that's not that much. No, 50 that's, bucks of, of finished recording. That's that's fifty bucks per hour in studio. So some of these guys, you know, are coming in and doing a, a five minute, a five minute clip, or you know, five to twenty minutes total of. Because you think an anime episode's 22, 22 minutes long, um, you're not doing. You might be in studio for an hour if you're the main character. Uh, otherwise, you're you're really only there you're probably getting paid an hour uh, baseline, right? For most of your production. So 50 uh, bucks yeah. where they really make money though, is by going to these conventions and meeting fans uh -huh. and the fans pay them. Um, so that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of how that works. But anyway, so yeah, you, you nailed it. Of course, uh, no report to HR, no report to anybody. So scared of how powerful he is in the industry, which I, I can't even say it without laughing because if you, if you've seen what happened to this guy over tweets, He's been fired from everything. So that whole power in the industry thing is is really let me ask you something. Out the I, I have to drill down to the bottom line here. You're, you're going to have to I mean, like hand to heart. Why did they target Vic? Is 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 his personality abrasive? 
Is he somebody that uh, is, is too successful compared to other voice actors or was too successful? Why is it that they targeted him in your estimation? Because all of this sounds like total bullshit. It, it just yeah. sounds like they're just making it up. It sounds like junior high school girls who don't like some boy and decided to spread the rumor that he has a tiny pee pee or something. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it just seems absurd. So there must be some under, uh, you know, some hidden, uh, but like a hidden rationale for this attack on the guy. You, you see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. No, I think I uh, kind of judging. Based on, I've talked to so many people about this, uh, both in the industry, people who watch the industry. What I'm coming to the conclusions is a couple things. One, and this is not the primary thing. Uh, some people may get the, and and I want to be clear, Vic doesn't think this is the primary reason either. Uh, there's some yeah. confusion about this because some people have said that they've heard Vic say that this was the reason. This is certainly a reason, but it's not the primary reason, at least according to Vic. And I don't think it's the primary reason either, but he's a conservative Christian who proselytizes oh. his Christianity uh, in public. So, sure. I, and that I think that's a good reason. It's, I don't know that people necessarily, uh, automatically go there. I know there's one voice actor who definitely hates him for that, but uh, that's that's one thing. But most of them, I think that maybe just puts like the faint uh, after image of a target on him. Like, okay, maybe maybe uh, I don't trust this guy, but, but that's not the reason. I think the real reason, jealousy. Uh, Over he's, what? This is something that I've learned quite a bit uh, oh, since, so since starting so this campaign. No, specifically with Vic. Um, oh, okay. so I, I did a GoFundMe for him and raised a whole bunch of money for yeah, his, I heard congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, but in doing that, I get, I get fan mail from his fans that get sent through the GoFundMe. They send private messages to the campaign and I see them and I try and relay them to him whenever I can. But, uh, what you see is over and over these stories of, I was a teen dealing with bullies Vic talked to me. He took my email and answered it. He answered me with a handwritten oh. piece of fan mail. Uh, I was on the verge of suicide. Vic took my phone call and talked me down. And then when I saw him again at the next convention, he remembered me and asked how I was doing. Um, from what I gather, Vic looks at fans like they're people. And like he has, and I think this stems from his Christianity, uh, he mm -hmm. has a duty to them to try and be encouragement and light for them in his role. Like I, he's like, I have, yeah. I have access to all of these people. My faith and my personal ethic tells me that I should do good with that. And so I think he tries to do that. Whereas I think many of his coworkers and we're seeing this, we're seeing this and I'm going to be talking a lot more about this tomorrow. Uh, but we're seeing this. They see their fans as dollar signs. They yeah. see these people as this person's going to come and get my autograph. I'll have to hug them. It'll be icky, but I'm going to get my $30 for my autograph and then they're going to go away. Yeah. They, I know, I know, <laughs> oh, man. I know that that's, many that's of them. Awful. So then here's the thing. So you've got this guy doing, doing right by his fans. And then you've got a bunch of people sure. who don't see them that way. And they're not necessarily bad. But what he's doing makes them look really bad because when a kid sends uh, a letter to three different voice actors, one of them's Vic Mignogna, he's getting one response and he's getting two nothings. Yeah. And that adds yeah. up and that that's why he has such goodwill amongst his fans. That's why even in the face of these accusations, uh, he is still maintaining his popularity, which is oh, crazy man. to think about. Think about it. Think about how despicable it is that basically these, you know, bullshit allegations have been trumped up because the guy cares about his fans out of right. envy and resentment. Jesus, what low fucking people. Yeah. You know? So that's... I'm not surprised. I, I mean, like envy. I personally am not envious of other people because I'm first of all, I have the life that I want and I'm happy with it. And on the other hand, you know, if somebody else has like a Ferrari, you know, good on them. You know, I, I what am I supposed to do? You know, right. so I don't care. You know, I don't care about how other people are doing. But this so sometimes I find it hard to recognize when people are envious. But what you're talking is just envy and jealousy and just 
oh man that is just so sad it's That's just pathetic it, you know they use the word toxic very often but the real toxicity yes. i mean envy is toxicity it's projection it's projection you know the the racism the homophobia the 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 toxicity all this shit that people spew whenever they spew it it's it's a projection on their part it's what they feel inside and they assume that other people feel the same thing and and they do not understand other people's motivations and of course they look at somebody who's like a a, a christian a a a very serious christian from what you're telling me who takes uh, you know christian teachings seriously and acts accordingly and lives his life accordingly yeah and, and they and see that automatically as something creepy that it can't be just out of the the goodness of the guy's heart right jesus and christ it's that's fucked up it's important to emphasize which part of Christianity he takes seriously too, because I mean, they're, they're Westboro Baptists take their version of Christianity very yeah, seriously. Probably. Right. Yeah. And they have, <laughs> they have great signs that are really, really awful. Um, yeah. But, but Vic doesn't even do that. Like the part that he takes seriously is literally like the, I need to be compassionate towards other people part. The part that we should all like, even if you're not a Christian, should be like, you know what? I'm glad that there's at least somebody out there trying to do the right thing to to their neighbors. Um that's the Yeah, exactly. So it's it's not the, the, the uh it's not that he's Christian and like anti-gay because there's lots of uh evidence that he's not anti-gay even or anything like oh, that. Are they, but, are they smearing him with that too? Oh, of course. He uh, are you familiar with Yaoi? Don't lie on me. No. Don't lie to me, coach. I know you looking at some Yowie. What's Yowie? No, uh, I have no idea. Okay, I'll give you the plausible deniability. Yowie is where you take um you take two heterosexual characters and you put them into a gay relationship. That's the the gist of it. <laughs> uh, so that's that's okay. yeah. So no, so anyway, there's this weird uh there's this weirdo who he didn't sign her Yowie fan art like a decade ago. And she was one of the major proponents of this. Uh, her, her, her Yaoi fan art about two uh, brothers who are minors. That's how, that's how horrifying. This two person is. Minors who are brothers. So, so you're talking uh, underage uh, homosexual incest. And she, he didn't sign it. He, oh my God. He's, he, he's, he's Hitler. He's oh shocking. God. And he may have even been bound by contract not to, because it's not canonical to the work. And so he may have had contractual obligations to not sign art that is like that. But I, that's a rumor. That's yeah. a rumor. So I don't know. Uh, on okay. that one. It's just fucking absurd. I mean, poor guy. Yeah. You know, and he's, you know, getting blown the fuck out uh, of all the conventions because of this. And, and and that is a very large part of his income. Is that is that accurate? That's, that's oh, the yeah. story, basically. Yeah, it's a huge part of his income. A any of these voice actors, they're making... They're making really embarrassing wages on their voice acting jobs. The voice acting is the that's the ticket to the fans and the fans are where you make money. Um, that I mean, that's that's just how it is. Uh, I don't I, it's no, not. No, I mean, yeah, it's not nefarious or anything. It's just that's that's how it is, is they found a way to allow them to monetize their performances outside of the company, which I mean, I guess good because it keeps the cost down for the studio and allows them to produce more stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the gist of it. Well, I I personally think it's kind of shitty that 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 they're doing this because they're paying them such low wages. Oh yeah, that that, that they're basically outsourcing the 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 um, the, the, the payroll to these conventions, and, right. and that seems to me shitty. And a lot of you know the people who go there. Uh, you know, they don't have that much money and they have to spend money on the voice actor. And it's not the voice actor's fault. It's really that the, the company's incentives are such. It, it seems like a shitty situation all around. Right. Now, this, this thing of targeting this poor guy for what? Out of just envy and resentment that he's good to his fans? That that just seems really fucking despicable as far as I'm concerned. I mean, he, he's just he just seems to be like a decent guy acting properly, treating his fans right. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I've said this, you know, like when I went to New York uh, back in January, I met up with fans and it was just a, a free meet and greet and whatever. I got like two, three drinks out of it. It was great. And I got onion rings out of it. I was so happy. Right. And yeah. and one guy who, whose name I don't know gave me a Amazon gift card for a hundred bucks, 
which is so incredibly kind of him, you know, and, and he didn't even, you know, write down his name. So I would be able to send him an email at least or thanking him. Right. Right. So if you're watching stranger, you know, thank you so much. It was, it was used properly. I bought Robert Caro's uh, biography of, uh, of, um, of Moses. Right. But anyway, <laughs> it, it was, it was really, uh, it was really a great, uh, you know, the power broker that one. Anyway, it was, um, it was really moving to me. And so I very much appreciate my fans and I completely understand uh, Vic's approach to it, to uh, approach to handling his fans of just trying to give that personal touch. It only takes five minutes. I, you have a lot of fans, Nick, right? I mean, uh, sometimes you get like a lot of I messages so. and, and, <laughs> and, and I get, I get a lot of messages from guys who have real serious problems. And, uh, you know, I, I, I try to answer every single one of the emails, uh, if only to tell him like, look on this, in this video, I talk about precisely that. I hope this helps out. Right. It, it takes two minutes. And so I don't understand this, this attitude of being number one, being dismissive of your fans like that. And number two, being so envious of a guy who's doing the right thing that just points to the fact that, you know, that you're doing wrong by your fans. Right. What the fuck? It just seems wrong. Yo, it it is. It is absolutely wrong, and that's but that's where they are, and so that's that's where this is. That's what this stems from. And so, yeah, I I saw you. I remember your 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 moment of uh, of like when you really broke out was when you had that guy in the used up chair uh, <laughs> talking out of his kitchen. What was now, his name? Wait you know? a minute. Wait a minute, Coach. Are you going to dox your chair on stream? You see, is the coach chair, is the coach chair in good shape? Have, are you taking care of that oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I can show it to you right now if you want. It's in. It's a little bit dusty because I've been doing some woodworking here in my studio. But, oh, yeah, uh, here, here's my uh, here, here's my, my chair. Uh, hang on. Just just so that we – are we having like a chair collection? No, chair? I'm just – I just okay. – we got to make sure that your chair isn't in the same sad estate as Shane's chair. Uh, no, that's a, that's How's a, that, look? that chair looks like it's going to live through the night. So that's good. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't have any, uh, 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 what you call it? Little, little tiny little oven for midgets. Well, actually it was yeah. a children's. He's probably a single father. No, you know? well, and, I mean, probably he, get... he's engaged. I mm -hmm. believe he's engaged. His, uh, his random fiance did wander into the stream, um, in the middle of the show. That was interesting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, was she good looking? I, I couldn't see her very well. She just kind of went into the right. background because he was broadcasting from like his kitchen. Uh, yeah. And, and so <laughs> he did get up to get some soy milk out of the fridge in the middle of the show. <laughs> uh, okay. but That was classic. That was classic, man. Oh, you couldn't have scripted that better. No, no. I'll have to send him an extra big check for that. Uh, mainly so he can buy a new chair. Um, so... <laughs> So anyway, that's that's the Vic story. But I, I, I don't know. Um, let's do just a minute on talking about this uh, from a cultural perspective, because that's kind of, um, you know, you you kind of talk about this type of thing a little bit uh, and, and you might have something to say about it. And then uh, let's do the book and then let's read some chats and then let's see how that goes. Sound sure. good? OK, so, sounds good. OK, so from from a cultural perspective, one, we've seen, I mean, this is not the first guy this happened to, obviously. It's not the first public right. figure or public person or whatever that this has happened to, uh, even in the past year. Um, we saw it with Kavanaugh. We saw it with Cosby. We saw it with uh, Weinstein. And, and some of them may be justified. I don't, I don't mean to, like, there's... Well, there's, the Weinstein one, for instance, is justified. I, I worked in Hollywood. Hollywood in the and uh, uh, you know around the let me see 90s 96 97 98 right right and uh, and I'll I'll tell you like I was a lowly as a nobody and even I had heard stories about Harvey Weinstein and eventually right. a, a few years later I actually had some dealings with Harvey Weinstein because he purchased a book of mine for um, for Anthony Minghella and Sidney Pollack to uh, turn into a movie, which unfortunately they never did because they had passed away. Minghella was writing it and he passed away, but be that as it may, um, you know, he's a nasty piece of work. Okay. And uh, the rumor at the time was that a certain Oscar winning actress got her Oscar because she was able to give Harvey Weinstein a very good blowjob uh, and made him ejaculate on, you know, in, twice consecutively in the single session that was the rumor 
And uh, I see no reason to doubt that rumor, to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't know if you heard that recording of him trying to get some Italian actress to, uh, uh, you know, give him sexual favors because she recorded some Italian actress was wound up in a hotel room with Harvey Weinstein and she recorded him. Right. Uh, which was, of course, that was going to happen. And I'm surprised that there aren't more recordings of, of that of that e episode. But anyway, um, she recorded him and, and the, the, the pleadingness and patheticness of the situation and 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 how, you know, a man of a great position would just if, first of all, do something that stupid. Because when you're in a position of power and you're elevated above your peers, you are quite vulnerable to that sort of thing. And there are a lot of people who will be more than happy to hurt you, um, you know, in order to take over your position. And so I, I, I never quite understood it. And if, but this was going on for decades, really. I mean, if I heard about it in the in the mid '90s, and it only now came out in what was it, 2017, 2018, right? Right. So we were talking 20 years, and it was probably happening for at least a decade before. So it took three decades for this shit to come out. Uh, you know, so that case that. Clearly, that was true. But on the other hand, you have the Woody Allen case, which if you look at the actual facts of it and, and just start looking at the nitty gritty, it's all bullshit. You, you can see clear as day that it's just some lie that Mia Farrow told in order to get back at her ex. Um, yeah, he, uh, um, you know, called with uh, her adopted daughter, this uh, Korean woman, her name slips my mind. But, you know, he, he, he got involved with her and married her and has been married to her for 20 years now or more, 20, close to 30 years, if you if you start doing the math. Yeah, so, well, I don't I don't know anything. I don't know anything about uh, that. But what I do know is that Mia Farrow produced Ronan Farrow and I will never forgive her for that. Um, Ronan Farrow is 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 an awful, awful individual <laughs> because he his interest is to spread the most pernicious uh no, no, the most salacious stories, whether they are true or not, on so far as the Weinstein story is concerned, they were true. But other stories that he, he's he's peddled, they were lies. The Kavanaugh story, lies. Yeah, uh, and and they were splashed across the pages of the New York Times. And the guy still is taken seriously. See, it's it's look. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes, but when you realize that a guy is only interested, he's he's clickbaity. He's only interested in the really salacious stories so he can get the headline, get the get the clicks. And he doesn't care if it's true or not. And and that's obvious with the Kavanaugh situation because the Kavanaugh allegations were absurd. They oh, were absolutely. crazy. I mean, come on. I mean, dream on that that a bunch of teenage boys, you know, were on some boat somewhere and raped some woman who was like in her 30s. Grow up. That, that just that, that doesn't happen. That does not happen in any, especially in that kind of. Uh, I have some experience with that kind of background of like the, these, like uh, you know, like uh, Catholic school boys. You know, they mostly most of them are so incredibly naive. They wouldn't even know what the hell to do in such a situation. They probably giggle and leave and try to get drunk and forget about the whole thing. They they would not. Uh, no, when I started hearing the Kavanaugh allegations, I thought this is so much bullshit. Right, but. The point is, what happens is that women are given carte blanche insofar as their testimony. In the culture today, a man can say something and everybody's like, prove it, show me evidence, forensics, this, that, the other, fingerprints, DNA, whatever. But a woman says, oh, you know, I saw a, um, a purple kangaroo from Mars land in my backyard and they came in and raped me. And everybody's like, oh, my God, she was raped by a Martian. You know, right. it's crazy. It, people believe all kinds of shit if a woman says it which is a neo-Victorian attitude. It's far from any kind of feminist belief in the equality of the sexes. Because, see, if men lie and men and women are equal, then that means that women also lie. And they do, they do, they do all the time. The FBI estimates that something like 25% of um, rape allegations are outright fabrications made by uh, one party that's just uh, pissed off at the other. So yeah. come on, you know? Yeah, and I mean, who knows what the statistic actually is, but it is a problem, even if it's 1%. I mean, that's really a problem. Uh, because yeah. because the accusation, the allegation carries so much weight, it destroys careers, it destroys lives, and it puts it puts people in jail, uh, frankly. Well, think about, think about it in, this, in these terms. See, 
Uh, there's something like I, I I could be off on the exact number, but I know that some somewhere between seven and ten percent of just robberies are made up, right? For insurance purposes or what have you, and that's robbery. That's like that's not a sexy crime, if you will. Okay, so it depends if, on the robbery. You know, <laughs> it depends on the robbery. Good point. But you know what I mean. I mean, uh, yeah, if it's Ocean's Eleven or something like that, then yeah, we can get behind that one. But look. If it's 7%, let's just say for the sake of argument, 7% of robberies are faked or reported robberies are faked, right? Right. Wouldn't it follow that roughly the same amount of, say, rapes would be faked, if not more, because there's a lot more emotion going on, you know? I mean, I mean there's a, that be the case? yeah, there's a statistical reality that, that at least some percentage going is going to be faked. And uh, there's... I mean, there's a lot of evidence to point to the idea that it's a significantly higher percent than other crimes, uh, yeah. mainly mainly because we've gone to this uh, this extreme of taking what I consider to be actually valuable interpersonal or therapeutic advice, which is listen and believe. I do think that there's value in listening and believing uh, to someone's story of of harm, so long as that story doesn't uh, get past the exchange from from me to you and go into we need to now destroy this other person um yeah when it's when it's for your self-healing uh listening and believing is is beneficial and and doing like an interrogation of now did did he really rape you that that isn't necessarily helpful for self-healing because people's minds make their reality uh for better yeah. or worse they just do and so um, yeah. you have to recognize that. But then once it gets to the point of now we need to take this accusation and put it on someone and put them in jail or strip them of their job, it's like, okay, wait, 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 now, now, okay, I listen and believe, but now wait, show me, show me because- well, uh, right, I, I, would, I would modify the listen to and believe to listen and keep an open mind. That's what I would modify it to. Because sure. it, it could it could very well be that you know the, the person starts to tell you and you keep an open mind and maybe at first you didn't think that she was raped but she goes into the details and she says oh this happened and that happened and all of a sudden you're thinking wow there seems to be a lot of potential evidence that this is true and so it is true it turns out as you check the evidence and yeah the woman was genuinely raped and that's keeping an open mind. Or it could be, you know, in in the opposite case that she starts telling details and the details just don't add up. Like for instance, with the Duke lacrosse players, right? The those uh, strippers that they hired for that party, right? They started telling all kinds of lies. They and the, the I forget the name of the prosecutor who eventually got disbarred. Uh, uh, you remember that case, right? Yeah, I remember the case. I don't remember the name. But um, yeah, it was no, not Nozick, but it was something like that. Uh, Nossinger or something like that. Uh, but anyway. Not going to practice law anymore. <laughs> yeah, he got, he got disbarred. <laughs> not gonna, yeah, exactly. He, he, the guy got disbarred because he didn't do his due diligence insofar as checking what the victim was saying. One, uh, one, uh, one of the um, accused young men wasn't even at the party. There was proof positive from an ATM machine several miles away because he'd gone to pick up some cash, he'd been elsewhere at the bar, than the party. But he was accused too by this uh, prosecutor because they believe women. Because the, the thing that drives me up the wall is that now women are like these these fragile little creatures. They're they're not uh, uh, individuals, but rather they're these you know these you perfect little flowers, these delicate little snowflakes that. If you uh, question anything, no matter how basic, then you're harassing them, then you're intimidating them, then you're being creepy or whatever the hell. And you're just trying to get at the facts, trying to get at the truth. And whenever somebody says, oh, you shouldn't question a victim, then I figure, well, the victim is then probably lying or to lying. I mean, come on, you're, you're a lawyer. You, you, you've been around the block. People lie all the time, sometimes for, you know, not untoward reasons, other times for extremely nefarious reasons. Yeah, and, but and just what I, it. with with yeah. that, though, um, some people some people's lies aren't conscious. Uh, they're not. And like you said, they're not nefarious or untoward. Like I said, uh, what I was talking about is they they've made their reality either through trauma, oh, yeah. either through convic uh, self conviction, whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, and when I say the listen and believe in the interpersonal context, sometimes that's just the useful thing to do, uh, because what again, what good does it do to to 
you know, go ahead and rip someone apart. Like I could, I could cross examine everyone who talks to me in real life, but uh, I'd probably have an ax in the face uh, within an, within an hour. But um, so this, I think this is good to kind of transition into talking about your book because your book has some of these themes in it uh, specifically with the, uh, the angle of, of um, I guess, feminism of uh, dealing with this dichotomy of, uh, women must be believed in this one particular instance, but in all other instances, we don't pay attention to that. Uh, or, or that they have, there are these delicate snowflakes that aren't able to deal with trauma in the way that every, you know, that I guess everyone else in the human race is expected to. Um, so do you want to start talking about the book? I mean, that's why sure. we're here after all is to talk about the book. Sure. It's a, like for people who don't know, like I started my career in Hollywood. After college, I went to Hollywood and I met with a little bit of success. You know, I did all right. Uh, I was earning a living, which is ultimately the the, the standard, the metric by way, whether you, or not you're a professional or not. And then I transitioned into writing novels. I wrote uh, thrillers. OK, and I got published by big five publishers by uh, Putnam and St. Martin's Press and Random House. And um and uh, what happened was that I, my last book, which came out in 2001, was called Acrobat. And it was, it was considered like a, a, a big book. And it was sold to Merrimax uh, in, for, for quite a bit of money, to tell you the truth, for Anthony Minghella and Sidney Pollack, uh, uh, for Anthony Minghella's and Sidney Pollack's production company, Mirage. And the idea when you was said that, when you said Mengele earlier, I thought you meant Yosef Mengele, and I was like, "What's he talking about?" But then no, I just I, let it go. And, See, I listened yeah. and believed right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, Anthony Mengele was the um, writer director, the Oscar winning writer director of The English Patient and the talented Mr. Ripley, uh, and he was going to make a movie out of uh, Acrobat, out of my novel. But he unfortunately passed away. And so that never came to fruition. But what happened was that, see, when I sold that book, I'd already written an outline for my next book, okay? Uh, that at the time just was called A Kidnapping. And, um, you know, it, it was sort of like the, the book I was gonna follow up with, right, in, back in 2001. But then I decided to transition into producing movies, which I did. I did movies, producing movies in Chile and South America, where I'm from. And from there, I actually directed a picture uh, based on this story. Uh, I wrote the script and directed it and did all right. And um, this was back in the mid 2000s. And I just did other things. I got into real estate and, and solar panel business and some other shit. And eventually in 2015, I found myself with a lot of free time on my hands. And I thought to myself, you know, hey, let's get back into publishing. And so I dusted off this uh, project um, and you know, a kidnapping, and wrote the novel of it, which eventually became Wilshire Boulevard. And I tried to get it published. And I had a very, very good agent uh, with a very, very good agency. And they were very excited about the book. They thought that this was a terrific project that was going to do very well. And um, I mean, well, you read it, and you can tell me if it was entertaining or not. And uh, it went out to publishers, to 20 editors. And it was rejected by every single one of them. And uh, which was like, it's unheard of for a big agency for something like that to happen, especially a project that the big agency is behind. And the consensus was that it was quote unquote problematic. And one editor called it hateful and misogynistic. And I was like, what are you talking about? I, I was completely baffled by the accusation. And that's when I realized that the publishing industry had left me behind. And I didn't, at the time, I, I'd been focused on other stuff. So I hadn't been following the whole culture war. I hadn't realized how culture had devolved and how the social justice warrior ideology had permeated publishing. Because everybody talks about Gamergate. Everybody's talking now about Comicsgate. But see, publishing gate uh, happened silently during the um, the aughts and the early teens of this century. Now, right? careful, and you can't you can't say aughts in good company, okay. coach. Okay, I don't that, know what we call that. Call that, that sounds that's the that's like the most. How do I say this? That's the most venerable language in the. Uh, <laughs> 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 we don't well, use we don't use aughts around here. <laughs> so anyway, 
um, it, it was really a shock to me. I mean, it really just blew me the fuck out. I, I was just shocked because, uh, you know, I'm a professional writer and I, I've always written professionally for money, you know, because it's a business. It's something that you do to entertain people and you write entertaining projects. And I was shocked that the political implications of my book would override its entertainment value insofar as publishers are concerned. Because after all, my thinking was publishing is a business. They want to sell books that entertain people so that people will want to buy them and tell other people about them. But I was shocked to realize that they cared more about the politics. And, and you know, as, as you can tell when you read uh, Wilshire Boulevard, that, that it, it does have a political point of view. And it has a very jaundiced view of feminists. There's one character in particular who's basically a feminist parody, and she's mocked relentlessly. And, and the, the contradictions of her position are shown to light quite brutally. And, right. and her end is kind of sad because of it, you know, because she believes in an ideology that's foolish, right? Yeah, her whole and story that, is sad. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that the whole point of the book was to write a book whereby you um, you are entertained and you're given something interesting to think about. But it was considered verboten and I was just stunned. And so that's why I actually started my YouTube channel because I was so dispirited and the idea of writing another novel because writing this novel wasn't an easy task, okay? That's why I recycled a previous story because what had happened was that, you know, when I thought to myself that I wanna get back into publishing, I'd started writing some other stuff and uh, they'd gotten away from me because I, I wasn't in the habit of writing. I hadn't written uh, uh, professionally for 10 years, uh, more than that. And so, you know, I was like, what the hell am I doing? I'd written some other things that had gotten away from me. So I figured, okay, I'll write this story, which I've already written and I know really well, and it'll be tight to the point, it'll be killer. And I own the rights to it. I mean, it was the movie that I produced and I own. So, you know. Uh, I don't know what it's called when you plagiarize yourself. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. And so I, I did it and I thought this is a terrific novel. It, it cost me some time and effort to do it, okay? Because I had to get back in the saddle. And when I got blown the fuck out that badly, I was like, fuck it, I'm not gonna write again, you know? And I'll, I'll just do something else. And that's when I stumbled on YouTube. Sure. But then, you know, I, I was talking to some friends, some people I got to know on YouTube and either, specifically Ethan Van Skyver, he was a big influence on this because I've only spoken to him once. Uh, but that one conversation was really interesting because he talked to me about his project Cyberfrog and how he just uh, independently funded it. And I was like, you know, I have an, uh, a very large audience. So why don't I just independently uh, fund it, you know, uh, do it myself. And the Indiegogo campaign, the expenses of publishing are rather high. And so I'm putting up half the money and the other half is is from my Indiegogo supporters. And uh, and they're gonna get a whole bunch of perks and the perks are in the Indiegogo campaign. And I figure, well, let, let's try this out. And you know something, it's it's the best decision I made because I'm not gonna be beholden to any publisher and I can speak my mind and I'm already writing the next book. And I'm like, fuck the mainstream because why bother? They, they, they want to present a vision of the world that's not true, that will comply to their ideology Okay, it's, it's not even that they want to see books that reflect reality. They want books that reflect their ideology. In the young adult market, which I pay close attention to, um, you know, there's a complete dumpster fire going on in that, in that, uh, that only people who are minorities can write about minorities and they don't care about uh, white people. They, they don't want to hear white, uh, you know, they, they're basically, they say to white authors, shut up, you know. And it's not your, it's our turn now and stuff like that, which is crazy. You know, I mean, you should be interested in what's good as opposed to what's, you know, racially correct. What's the, the, the correct racial ratio <laughs> to, to coin a, a bizarre term, but that's what's going on. And, uh, I, you know, I, I want nothing to do with that environment and I'm, uh, much happier with the YouTube crowd because I look at that uh, meetup I had in January which is so lovely with my fans and they're just decent people, you know, and I talked to a lot of them and some of them disagreed with a lot of things I said, but it was a respectful disagreement. It was an exchange of ideas. It was the notion that nobody owns the truth. We're all kind of stumbling along trying to find the truth, you know, because it's the truth is out there and we have to help each other find it. And I thought there was such a healthy attitude. 
And so the idea of going to mainstream publishing now is like, screw that. I, I don't want to do that. I, I much prefer to be this, to do it this independent route. And uh, yeah, the book is going to be published officially for every consumer on uh, May 15th, audiobook, ebook. Um, and uh, Indiegogo supporters are going to get advanced copies by April 15th. And uh, yeah, it's going gangbusters. The response to the book has been really good. JF Getty P really liked it. Um, Godwinson really liked it too, but uh, we're supposed to be, do, be doing a show about it at some point. And, uh, and you enjoyed it. So tell me your reaction. What did you think of it? Was it hateful and misogynistic? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I certainly understand where people would get that impression uh, because that's, that's the rule, the place we live, right? That's, that's where we live today is that uh, pretty much anything that speaks out against feminism is hateful and misogynistic. And the, the book has... Um, not only strong overtones, but some very clear exposition about that. So uh, is it hateful and misogynistic? Sure. Uh, that's not a bad thing at all. Um, the, uh, the book is, I'm, I'm not finished with it, uh, to, be, to be honest. Uh, I, I did try to get it finished, but I wasn't able to because uh, things have been very, very busy around, around the Ricada Law household. And uh, we've had all sorts of fun disasters. But all good, all good. Um, however, I did get a, a significant portion read, and I will be finishing it um, very soon, uh, probably in the. Were next... you entertained? Were you um, entertained? I was entertained. I was entertained. The story, the the framework of the story is good. Um, I I do have criticisms though. Uh, sure. I don't I I don't have all praise for you. Um, okay. I I think there's some. If I had to make a suggestion, uh, I would ask. Uh, you to consider having someone edit it uh, because I think there's some parts where uh, how do I how do I phrase this uh, there's some uh, no <laughs> no no I don't there's no need to be brutal on it uh, there's just there's parts where I think you get um, into your own voice and you you go farther than is necessary so I do think mm -hmm. I think significant cuts can be made in some of the uh, exposition and description, um, a little less telling, a little, uh, cause you do the showing, you know, the show don't tell meme or whatever yeah. from writing and you do the showing, but then I think, uh, you tell a little too much after that. And I think that mm -hmm. displays, I don't know if it's a, it's not a lack of, I think it's a lack of faith in the audience's ability to get it. And I think your audience, uh, deserves a little more credit and that's not to be a slight, uh, but yeah. I think, I think what you're trying to do is get a point across and that in getting that point across, you go too far. And so I think some cuts okay. can be made there. Um, I think you should cut about 50% of the F words from the dialogue, uh, but, but that's just, that's just me uh, yeah. and, and how I approach writing. Cause I think in, when we put it on a paper um, and I do this too, when, when you put it on a page, it's easy to let the profanity fly way more way more than yeah. than uh doing it but when i read uh i read i don't read out loud but i read audibly in my mind um yeah, word for too, word actually. it takes me yeah. forever to read stuff because of it um that's the main thing like i said i think the overall structure is good uh but i do think i do think it needs some edits uh with the with the characterization exposition and with um with some of the going a little too far with the telling uh, and, and of course the, the dialogue is just, it's got like Tarantino levels of, of F words in it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, I just personally think it'd be a cleaner read if you do, if you do that. And I think it, I don't think that the page count is not exorbitant right now. It's like 279 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and I think it would bring it right down to that magic 250 ish range. If you, if you were to take that edit process and really um, which part specifically no i think i think it's just over the course of cutting out like the an expository line so you have a paragraph that says five lines long that mm -hmm. you'd be cutting okay. one of those okay. lines uh, it's several points throughout the throughout the book i just think it would mm -hmm. bring it closer to that 250 and i don't know mm -hmm. enough about publishing to know if that's a magic number but i like round things um so that so then now it must be correct because that's what I like. Right. Uh, no, uh, the, the, the standard novel that, that you pick up, you know, the, the, the generic thriller mainstream book, 
you know, the, the, the sweet spot is roughly 90,000 words. It should be somewhere between 70,000 words and 110,000 words. Right. And this novel clocks in at 80,000 words. So it's, it's just shy of that sweet spot of 90,000 words. Okay. Sure. Uh, th th that, that's sort of like the industry standard. Um, you know, you always wanted to have like uh, about 300 pages printed, you know, because you got a manuscript copy and the, the book as printed will be, uh, you know, the magic number, like I said, is is roughly 320 pages printed. Okay. And this one is clocking in at, at 305 printed. And so, yeah, it, it's in so, so far as length, it's it's the industry standard. Like, like I said, I wrote it very specifically to get back into publishing. Right. And what I've noticed is that the publishing is just um, part of the reason publishing is dying is because people aren't really interested in the books that are coming out. And it's because the people picking the books have a political agenda and they, it's agenda driven and not consumer driven, which I think is catastrophic, really. But if that, that's the way it is. And it, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent. And so my my um, my thinking is that what's gone, what's happened is that a whole generation of Ivy League students have imbued this uh, toxic ideology. I hate to use the word toxic, but it's the only one that describes it. And these Ivy Leaguers, right, they, they go into companies as the bright young recruits, right? Right. And I'm just moving over, sorry. Yeah, no they, worries. They move over to the, to the new company. Um, you know, they, they, um, they, they get the, oops, shit. I just had a little disaster here, hang on. Um, they go to the new to the company to the publishing house to marvel to whatever and they join it and they have this uh, ideology and they try to impose it and they think that it's the right ideology and so they don't have any kind of trouble imposing it irrespective of whether it hurts sales and a lot of these companies they're big enough that it's not obvious at first how this is hurting sales they just say oh you know the market's dipped or whatever or the industry is in a bit of a slump but they don't realize it's the new people that they've brought in. Um, I can speak from, you know, in, in my own case, I, I went to an Ivy League school and the, the kids coming out now are these very, very fragile individuals who all spout, you know, lockstep like robots. They spout this, um, you know, social justice ideology. And they are just uh, anything that is critical, anything that speaks of reality they reject and my thinking is because their parents gave them whatever they wanted and catered to their every whim and so now as adults they are unable uh they uh, any kind of criticism is intolerable to them they they literally cannot tolerate criticism or anybody who disagrees with them or counteracts what they're saying um it, it's it's really really sad you know recently there's this uh youtuber who does film criticism, right? That I really like. I'm not going to mention his name. And I really like this guy. And I wanted to support him to the tune of 20 bucks a month on Patreon. And I signed up and everything, you know, and it was all set and done, you know, and, and I was happy to be doing so. But he rejected my, um, my, my patron. He blocked me, you know, and, and I got a refund and, you know, when he, nothing he, happened. He refused to take your money. Yep. What a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, Coach I, Red Pill, you know, and, and I and, wish you know, my I, haters like would evil... give me money. <laughs> you know, but it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I, it, you know, his politics, I recognize his politics as being uh, leftist. Right. But he's doing very good criticism. OK, now I can prove that he was a leftist because he actually liked The Last Jedi. OK, but. Ooh. As some of his other criticisms, film criticisms were really on the money and they were really smart. And some things that I'd never thought of that he pointed out, which I was really impressed by. That's why I supported the guy. I was happy to do so, you know? I right. mean, I put my money where my mouth is, right? And he turned it down. And I'm like, holy cow, how is this possible? But, you know, the, their ideology is their ideology is more important than earning a living, you know? 20 bucks a month is $240 a year. I, let me ask you, Nick, could you use $240 a year extra? Yeah, I have five children. They use that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, I got, me too. You I know, use I, that. I got a, a five-year-old and a four-year-old. You know? I use that in milk every month. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, you know, if, if some SJW, some leftist commie were to start sending me 20 bucks a month, 
I'd be like, great, thank you. <laughs> you know, I mean, so I just don't understand it. But that goes to show that they are willing to sacrifice their best interests for their ideology. Now, if they're willing to sacrifice their best interests, do you think that they're willing to sacrifice somebody else's life for their ideology? Three guesses, but my guess is yes, yes. I mean, and I think personally, to tell you the truth, I'm very blackpilled on this issue. I think that we're heading for a civil war. I think we're heading for a civil war. And, and these years are the equivalent of the 1840s in, in American history. You know, sure. that, you know the civil war isn't going to happen tomorrow, but it's on, on its way. It's in the post. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I yeah. Think I, the, I, think we're, gonna... I think we're in it. I think we're in a civil cold war, frankly. And uh, I yeah. think we're, we're a powder keg spark away from hitting it. But let me, um, let me do this. Let's say, uh, like I said, the, the Wilshire Boulevard Indiegogo is in the chat. You're, you're already fully funded, uh, for your goal, but certainly people are welcome to pick up, uh, copies of the book if they're interested and to, you know, surpass that funding goal. It's always good to get more money. More money tends to lead to better and better products and, and, uh, and future products that are good as well. Um, so yep. definitely check it out in the chat. Uh, you know, see for yourself. It's I can tell you it is a uh, it is a thriller story. Um, the the architect like and and I I hope I don't I I don't mean anything no, bad. I'll, I'll, let me pitch it. I I can I can pitch yeah, it because it. I've been pitching it quite a while. The the story is very simple. It's the, the daughter of a billionaire hedge funder gets kidnapped. Now the 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 hedge funder is a son of a bitch, right? And uh, you know at first it sort of like plays out like you know he doesn't really want to pay. And he wants to make sure that his daughter is okay. I mean, excuse me, he does want to pay, but he wants to make sure that his daughter is okay. And at first, it seems like a run-of-the-mill thriller. But then the story starts taking these, these weird turns. And all of a sudden, in very random directions. And it's not just about this, this thriller story. It's also about Los Angeles, which is a city I know very, very well, and a city which I do not care for. And, uh, and I sort of like show what Los Angeles is really like. And, uh, you know, it just chews up dreams and it's kind of like a horrible city. I think it's the city of the devil, irrespective of whether it's called Los Angeles, right? Right. And um, the, the story devolves and you start to realize that there are a lot more layers going on because you start to see the different characters. They come into full focus and you see the press, you see the politicians, you see a whole bunch of people whose self-interest is involved in this kidnapping. And it all goes very, very south, including the kidnappers, because the kidnappers, they are very intelligent and they are very educated. They're all college graduates with, you know, master's degrees and what have you, but they're all, you know, drowning in debt. And that's why they're doing the kidnapping. And so because of it, they're, they're making a lot of mistakes because they're not really criminals. Okay. And so it all goes south. And it has like a, like some shocking twists and turns and a shocker of an ending. And so, yeah, that, that's why I want you to read it, Nick, so you can get to it. I was hoping right. we'll have another conversation about it when you finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was hoping to get it finished and I, I really did. I really did try, but man, it's been uh, no, got life. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot too much of it sometimes too much of it. Well, that, like I said, that's the book. Uh, Wilshire Boulevard. It's in the description of the chat. Go check it out. Uh, you know, you guys make that decision for yourself. And uh, and if you if you like it, if you like Coach, support his work. That's what uh, that's what that's one thing this channel is about is supporting oh. independent work from people because I I think I think it's our duty to break the traditional molds. I mean, the publishing yeah. industry has not functionally changed in uh more decades than anyone's been alive and uh the we see it in other industries as well it's it's an antiquated system they're not adaptable and they don't allow people to speak to um audiences that want to hear their work so uh yep. so with that uh i am way behind on super chats and uh okay. i i have a tradition on this channel to go ahead and read all of them and so we'll sure. be reading through them and feel free to uh feel free to uh comment as you choose some of them may be directed to you 
And um, of course, uh, if at any time you need to buzz out, don't. Let, let me know. put on my 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 virgin glasses because with, with this one, I, with these pa pairs of glasses, which I need for reading, I'm guaranteed to never get laid for the rest of my life. There okay, you go. go ahead. There you go. <laughs> All right. So this is going way back. This is an hour ago. Uh, Plum yeah. Logan says, please invite Hard Bastard on when Mueller report drops. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's great. He's really great. You should. You should. I've, I've heard his name, but I've never actually uh, listened to no, his stuff. No, he's really, he's really smart guy, and I, I think that he's terrific. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in in a long time, actually, and I should get in touch with him. But yeah, a good suggestion. Check out Hard Bastard. He's great. Okay, Painful Buggery, which is one of the dirtiest and funniest names. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Says, hey, CRP, changes camera angle. How are changes camera angle? You today, changes camera angle. <laughs> you have too many cameras, coach? <laughs> well, right now, I, my rig is like four cameras, right? But I, I've been getting bored of it. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch up and I'm going to do more. Because, um, well, the most I've ever done is 10 in one video. Oh, I'm my not goodness. Kidding. That's yeah, too many cameras, just, coach. What are you it doing? It was a lot of fun. It was just a lot of fun. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I love doing multicam. It's just so much fun. You should do yeah. like a dragonfly eye where you have all of them at once and you look like the... I have. I, oh, okay. I have. Yeah, you look okay. like the and architect started, in the Matrix. And they started moving around. And that was, the, that was the funny thing. They started moving around on the screen. Oh, weird. It was weird. like a checkerboard. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, I'll, I'll show it to you sometime. It was my, uh, my, my video that I did on The Godfather. Okay, on The Godfather, the novel, not the movie. Sure. And so, yeah, just Google Coach Red Pill, uh, The Godfather, and that'll pop up. And that, it, it, I did all kinds of funky shit with it. It was pretty cool. Frankly, sounds horrifying. <laughs> but I'll check it out. I'll check it out. <laughs> oh, yeah, because uh, you're looking at my ugly mug. Yeah. No, uh, just like moving. Do, no, 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 no. Moving, moving camera boxes and stuff. Like the amount of the amount of bad I am at video production, anything, anything above just a static camera creeps me out. Uh, the Texan 83 says good bourbon, sharp chisels and backed saw and nice pieces of staple, uh, staple mahogany in need of dovetails to make a drawer for a jewelry box. Only thing now I need is Nick to be on time. Dang. RIP, buddy. Sorry. Uh, never on time. Never on time. Always a minute late. But that's YouTube's fault, not mine. Uh, Willa, a.k.a. Bloody Legend, says, will you be representing Ralph after tonight's drama? Like I said, if Ralph needs representation from me, Ralph knows how to get a hold of me. Uh, Ninja Bread Man, you didn't read the super chat I sent before the stream last night. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. But it's all good. Shout out to the timestampers who post in the afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, those guys are amazing. They go through these three and four hour streams and post every relevant piece and that's uh, with timestamps and that's great. I always try to yeah. pin those when they do show up. Uh, Axelian. Really kind. I, I, I get just a shout out to those guys on my channel who do the same. They're, they're wonderful people and I thank them very much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's such a service to us and, and no one needs to do that. Yeah. So, uh, Axelian yeah, exactly. says coach morning after pill joins the fray, Nick, you are the king of late night. Uh, okay. I don't know the backstory there. Do you have anything? Well, that... uh, uh, if you mind, I, I want to address this really quick. Uh, you sure. know, some people have said that, um, some people have lied and said that I convinced a girlfriend to have an abortion. Okay. Now I didn't, I've never done that. If I had, I would have made a video about it, okay? Because I've done videos about other things that were quite personal because I thought that they were relevant and useful lessons could be drawn from it. So I've never done that, but people are saying it because a lie has been spread. And you were talking about Vic, right? Right. The, the lies that have been spread about Vic, right? Even if he wins and everything, there's always gonna be this, 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 this tinge, this, this dark glow, if you will, around Vic about these allegations because people will always be like, well, maybe he did. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, there, it wasn't proven, you know, there's always going to be that suspicion. And that's the thing with smears that the, the smear, even if you, you prove it, and of course you can't prove a negative. I can't prove that I did not convince a girlfriend to, uh, you know, have a, have an abortion, but, and, and the same with Vic, he cannot prove that he did not ever, you know, uh, sexually assault anyone. Right. But those kinds of accusations where you cannot prove the negative, those are the worst smears and they are told by liars who just want to do you harm. In my own case, like I said, I've never um, convinced any girlfriend to have an abortion. If I had, I would say so. I would have made a video about it. Okay. Sure. So it's bullshit. Did, 
but like, is there something like, where did that even come from? Is, is there a girlfriend who did have an abortion? Like, is that where they're getting nope. that or? No, it's just a made up lie by a YouTube individual that, that I'm not going to name because I'm just not interested in getting involved in it. Sure. But it's sure. a YouTube celebrity who pulled this shit, just made it up wholesale just to smear me. You know, and it's just a lie. And uh, that's why I no longer have any kind of relationship with the individual. And I don't even want to mention the individual's name because gotcha. it's just bullshit. If it were true, I would say so. Shit, I've talked about, uh, uh, you know, other things that were worse on my channel that I've done, you know, because, you know, that's the kind of channel I have. I I want to do, to do a warts and all channel, okay? This line, it's just a smear, you know, and, and it's it's because of reasons of their own. Yeah, because that's that's what you were talking about earlier, is that uh, you said that everything is wired for fight or flight and that your your version of man uh, that you talk about and what what it means to be a man is to break that wiring, to take a step back and not engage that fight or flight response, but to simply uh, address and assess the situation. And, exactly. And so that's how you would present this stuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Uh, Amtank mm -hmm. says, no, this is Amtank. That's because I, I talked about Amtrak. Uh, yeah. So good job not being Amtrak and not killing your, your passengers. Gamer for Christ <laughs> 07 says, if I was a Canadian visiting Florida and got into a fight with a drunk guy on parole, would I be deported asking for a friend? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe the answer, the, the lawyer answer is it depends. Uh, and then Gamer for Christ 07 says, disregard my last comment. Oh, he probably sent it before we said we weren't talking about any of that drama. Uh, Polly says 3.00. I don't know what that uh, is, uh, but I don't okay. know either. Uh, Lord Chippy Dip says CRP is trash. People are not, uh, they are not friendly with you right now. Um, this is the only no. show I'll happily skip. Garbage guest is garbage. He's clearly here to market his garbage book. See you tomorrow, Nick. Wow. Uh, you, you are not attracting all of the lovers tonight. You've got some haters. Well, no, it's a, I, I have a very polarizing personality and, and there are people who really enjoy my content and other people who I know hate watch my content. Uh, but, you know, what's a guy supposed to do? You know, I'm the way I am. And also, I think that it pisses off people that a lot of times I sort of like puncture their sacred cows. And sure. then in time, it turns out that I was right. And that pisses people off. It always pisses people off. You know the story of the Emperor's New Clothes? Yeah. You know the little kid who at the end points out, hey, why is that man walking around naked? Mm -hmm. Well, they don't say that. See, after the kid says that, everybody in the town hates the kid because everybody hates it when you know you are shown up that you're believing something completely false. And often as not, they shoot the messenger. And a lot of times I don't have a problem saying, you know, the Emperor has no clothes. And you know, people start yelling at me and shut up. It's not true. You're lying and CRP is true. And then they're like, well, CRP is crap because we hate him. You know, it sure. happens. I, I, I could care less. I, I, I don't take it seriously. The uh, I got a, I got one criticism for what you said. There are no sacred cows because sacred cows come from India, which was invented by 4chan, which is fake. <laughs> right. so, just so we're forgot. just so forgot. we're clear. Uh, Rugal Midgal says, did CRP insist on that disclaimer in those terms? No, actually I did. Uh, I did not want to talk about Andy and Ralph drama, uh, with CRP because, uh, I didn't think it would amount to a productive discussion and it would derail, uh, what we were here to talk about, which was his book in culture. So, uh, no, I actually sent him an email prior to the stream and said, I don't want to talk about the drama with Andy and Ralph. So there you go. Uh, what was my response? It, I don't either. I don't want to talk about them at all. Uh, I'm beyond it. Something along that line. Uh, I yeah. think that's an accurate paraphrase. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, KTTK says, CRP, would you eat a cheeseburger out of the trash? No. Has anybody? <laughs> well, Has uh, anybody? Uh, uh, Monk is a meme that I missed. Well, I don't know if it's a meme, but Monkey Jones was on my stream last night, and he said yes, he would, because uh, he really loves cheeseburgers. So that's... Uh, I, don't I know love if... cheeseburgers too, in spite of myself, because I'm be becoming a fat old man. But uh, no, I would not <laughs> pick it out of a dumpster, you know, unless I was flat broke. You know, I, I don't begrudge somebody who's flat broke. You know, I mean, right. certainly not. You've but just in my, you know, 
you've just moved beyond <laughs> you've moved beyond the the fa the uh crucial life phase of eating cheeseburgers out of trash cans I, uh, I got a couple of bucks saved up. I can afford the cheeseburgers. <laughs> you know, fingers crossed, you know. If the Indiegogo uh, campaign goes well, then I will be able to afford cheeseburgers. So please, go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, is it a meme? I'm missing something. I don't what, know. What? Uh, okay. The first time I've ever seen the question was last night to Mumkey. So I don't know if that's related to Mumkey or well, what. Uh, clearly, but. it's a meme that's going around. Uh, <laughs> it's obscure. Okay. Uh, enter the name here. Bohemian says, hi, Nick. Here's your five USD. I gave five to Andy and Ralph too. I also support V. Good luck with your book, Coach. There you go. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Polly says, CRP. Is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Who was that uh, person who donated five and, and wish me good luck on the book? It was enter the name here underscore Bohemian. I don't, I don't Bohemian, know. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Very kind of you. Uh, Polly says CRP is boring and no one cares about his book. So that's, well, that's okay. rude. Um, some people do cause they've bought it. Uh, you, like I said, you are fully funded. Uh, prison Tyrone says this stream is proof of why zoom slash Godspeed live is the only good streamer left. You cucked tonight, buddy. Okay. Uh, if that's your opinion, that's fine. Dragonfist 900 says shout out for my family friendly channel. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> sometimes the family friendliness goes out the window, but uh, that's OK. That's OK, because uh, part of that is we also don't censor speech on this channel. Um, no one zero six two says uh, or probably number. I think that's N.O. period for number. Does Coach Red Pill use any shampoo on his beard? If yes, what brand asking for a friend? <laughs> uh head and shoulders yeah when i when i wash up you know when i wash my hair i uh use the head and shoulders to wash out the beard too oh someone said ralph ate a burger out of the trash ralph come Bullshit. on buddy. <laughs> video or i don't believe it uh, dra uh dragon fist 900 says oh wait no no i yeah yeah, yeah. also i'm a 22 year old seminary student god bless uh god bless you buddy good luck uh john good luck. John Smith says, ask CRP if being a man is persuading your mistress to have an abortion, which I think you addressed just a little bit ago. But yeah. although this is, uh, uh, let's, this is a more esoteric question, or I don't know if esoteric is the right word. This is a more, right. uh, uh, um, like a hypothetical question. Uh, is it, is being a man persuading your mistress to have an abortion? Does that have any place in, in your version of manhood? I think that's a good question. Well, I, I fundamentally am, uh, philosophically, I'm opposed to abortion. Okay. okay. I'm also opposed to capital punishment because right. I think uh, insofar as capital punishment, I think that uh, there are people who have committed crimes that are beyond the pale who deserve to forfeit their lives for the sake of the society. But the problem I find is that any justice system will be made by human beings and human beings are fallible and thereby – uh, uh, the justice system can be fallible to the point where it executes an innocent man. And to prevent against that, should not allow... Whoa, you went robot on me. Hold on just a second. And insofar as abortion is concerned, I think that uh, life does begin at the moment of conception. It is a, a brand new life. It is currently legal. And therefore, I think that um, it is an option for people. I think that it is immoral. But by the same token, I have to recognize that sometimes uh, on a practical basis, uh, it's necessary to, to commit an abortion. You know, it can derail some person's life too completely. Uh, and so a lot of times it's, it's a very difficult issue. And so I've said that in some cases, you know, you should be willing to uh, uh, convince the person that you're with, the woman presumably who has had um, who is pregnant, to get an abortion because sometimes, if you were to have a child with this woman with an unsuitable woman, who would derail your life and and keep you from achieving the things that you want to achieve, that's the necessary step because at this point in time it is legal for a woman to have an abortion. Do I think that that's right? No, I think that it should be made illegal. And therefore, um, if it were made illegal, people would be a lot more careful insofar as their sexual encounters, and they'd be uh, they'd ensure that you know any kind of uh, you know uh, pregnancy did not happen. People who have abortions willy nilly. I heard some girl had had like thirteen abortions, and finally she was told that 
uh, 13 abortions before the age of 25. And finally, she was told that she had become infertile because of all of the abortions, you know, I, which is crazy, right? But that is because abortion is legal. If it were illegal, such a situation would never have happened. But okay, I'm, I'm, you know, going all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> I am ambivalent about the issue of abortion. Uh, because on a philosophical level, I'm against it. On a pragmatic level, I recognize that sometimes it is the best solution to a uh, problem that a guy might be having. Uh, in my own case, no woman I've ever been with has ever had a, an abortion, uh, from me at any rate. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, insofar as that question is concerned, it has not affected me. Sure. I look at it from both the moral perspective and the pragmatic perspective, and those perspectives contradict one another. And I have yet to be able to square that circle. Yeah, that's mm. a long-winded answer. Sorry about that. Well, how how dare you? I'm the only one allowed to be long-winded here. But oh, I, okay, okay. Sorry, I was stepping on your turf. I get it. Yeah, watch it. <laughs> no, I uh, I poured myself I poured myself a Glenlivet Nadura. Um, which is, uh, and it's a specific, the Oroso, Oroso, which is, mm, this is a good scotch, buddy. Well, mm. I, I'll take your word for it because it's, it's the morning here. So if I crack open the Jägermeister and start downing shots, that would be a bad look for the rest of my day. You know shots of Jägermeister. Are you a 12 year old girl? Like what's going on here? coach? Yeah. <laughs> no, well, it's, I go through phases. I go through phases. <laughs> right? A while I was into port wine. I was, I was into a big into port wine. And, uh, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, tawny ports, uh, uh, vintage ports. I was into it heavy, right? Spending a lot of money on, on different brands and different kinds, right? But now, uh, uh, last six months or so, for something, for some reason, I've gotten a hankering for Jägermeister. But it's just a, a, a phase, you know. I'll, I'll probably go back to gin come the summer. Good. You know, yeah, tell tonic, me. That's my drink. Look me up when you're back in your emo phase so we can drink gin together. Because <laughs> uh, I don't, Jägermeister is disgusting. Uh, okay. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sakaki Onzai says, this guy is boring, Nick. I gave him a chance and ended up like Ron Soye for a few minutes. Hashtag no coaches, only couches. So again, you are a, you are a lightning rod uh, yeah. go, right now. Uh, Prison Tyrone the says- Permanently, permanently. Permanently yeah, a lightning rod. Uh, yeah. Well, at least you're always fully erect. Because uh, <laughs> uh, Prison Tyrone says- Hey, Gonzola Lira, why did you copy the script from your movie Sequestro into your book? Uh, well, because I, first of all, I, I really hate it when people like use my uh, actual name because. Oh, is that your. Uh, I present I'm sorry. myself as. You know, that's quite all right. But th that's my, uh, you know, I, I present myself as CRP because I want to. And this book that I'm publishing, I'm publishing it as CRP. Okay. Now, uh, insofar as me recycling the story uh, that I did in a movie, you do that all the time. First of all, I own it, so it's mine. So it's like how – first, I wrote it. I own it because a lot of times you can write something but not be the owner of it. In this particular case, I wrote it and I own it. And, of course, turning a movie into – the story that you use in a movie into a novel – you know, it's it's like a, a totally different thing. It's not like I'm like uh, slipping a fast one by anybody. So I don't understand the criticism, but it's basically people who want to shit on me and I don't take it seriously. Yeah. And uh, there seem to be a lot of those. I mean, but you you're used to that, right? Like uh, that's like you said, well, an eternal lightning that, rod. See, there is a, a there is a um, we're living in an area of the tyranny of the minority where a, a vocal minority can dominate the discourse, no matter how absurd their positions, because they're louder and, and they make their, their, their voice known. They make a fuss, okay? And so a lot of people who really hate my guts, well, they make a big fuss. And so people think, oh, well, everybody hates uh, CRP. But I'm getting 500 subscribers per day, okay? I'm getting uh, over 50,000 views per day or 60,000, something absurd like that. So it can't be that everybody hates my guts, right? It can't be that everybody hates my guts if I get these e emails from people saying how much my videos have helped them and, and how the the things I've pointed out or the insights I've been lucky enough to stumble across have helped other people, okay? So it's just a vocal minority, and they, they make their voices known, and they're just trolls, and I attract a lot of them. I, I attract 
uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of these people really despise me because, see, I think that they despise the fact that a lot of times I'm right. And so far as the recent drama is concerned, you know, I, I realized who these people were and before most other people. And I said so. And people hated me for it. And now, well, it's coming out to be true. So, you know, the, the, them's the breaks. Like I said, the boy in the story of, of the emperor's new clothes, everybody hates him. You know, Cassandra in Greek mythology who could see the future and everybody hated her, her for it. Well, that's because she's a crazy hoe. Let's, let's be real. Let's be real. Cassandra, <laughs> that chick is Cassandra's nuts. crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you would be too if no one ever believed you, but you were always right. Um, Al, Al says, uh, let's see, CRP is a pretentious hypocrite. We'll still show you love though, as I am skipping the stream. See you tomorrow. Later, buddy. Uh, Rusco Disco says, of all the people that wants to talk about being a man, it sure as poop can't be this coach. I'll skip this stream. Well, man, you've cost me two viewers, which is rude. Um, well, they sent you super chats. Which <laughs> that's nice. true. That's true. Uh, Mithrin Emmer says, I have to agree with you both. The older students, me included at my law school, are more focused and tend to do better. Uh, cheers to you, buddy. I wish you the best in law school. Uh, Prison Tyrone says, hey, coach, why are you copying Aaron Clary? Who's Aaron Clary? I have no idea who this guy is. Aaron Clary is, is a guy that um, uh, I, I've heard about him recently because he said some really nice things about a video I'd done, uh, a video called The Loan. And he, he was just really nice about it, and, and he, he went over it. Um, I, I do not follow Aaron Clary. Uh, you know, I don't mean to be rude to the man at all, okay? Uh, he, he's sort of like life advice like I do. But the thing is, see, I've noticed something. All of these people who give life advice, right, uh, and all of these pickup artists, for instance, all of these people who are talking about these subjects, right, they're basically all saying the same thing because the truth is – the same it's like you know like you go to different places in the world uh to learn calculus you go to france and you take a teacher who teaches you calculus there you go to russia you go to australia you go to mexico and they all teach you the same thing because calculus is the same everywhere irrespective of the teacher you know you might like one teacher more than the other uh but the subject matter is always the same it's immutable and i think that that's the issue here that okay. you know, good advice, good points of view are sort of like immutable. Yeah. So you're not copying Aaron Clary, you're saying? No, I, I, okay. I don't watch his content. So I, I, and I don't mean to be rude by saying yeah. that I don't watch his content, but no, no, I no. just don't. No, I don't yeah. watch anybody's content. I, I frankly just barely have time uh, to make my own content <laughs> and keep make children it. alive. Uh, that's, yeah, exactly. That's what's going on. Uh, there's lots of content I would love to watch. Uh, Dirty D disagrees says CRP calling others beta LMAO pure projection. Uh, Never called anybody a beta uh, uh, unless they really deserved it. Sure. Uh, Jesse Lee Peterson, that guy's got the, you, he wins. Yeah, he should beta. trade. He should trade. Uh, yeah. Axelion says kick boring boomer acquire beards. I can't kick myself from my own stream. Come on. Uh, KTTK says the gunt will consume the stars. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> That's a strong gravity pull if it's consuming stars. Dirty D disagrees. Says Nick, look at the ratio and then kick this loser. Um, I, I've only kicked one person off a stream, and it was because he broke some uh, rules that he and I had agreed upon. Uh, and that's that's how it goes. I I do not kick people even. Unfortunately, even if chat uh, has some some vocally outraged people, but uh, no, I think personally, if I can expound on on what being a man is, it's about integrity. And the integrity is to uh, to listen to people and um, to go by what you say. Uh, I'll tell you, Coach. I had a lot of people tell me not to do a stream with you today. Um, yeah. To be to be brutally honest, uh, lots of people said don't do it, but I said you know what? I I told Coach I would do a stream, and and I'm sorry that there's drama that uh, people disagree with, but um, I'm a man of my word, so I'm certainly not gonna not gonna not do a stream with someone just because uh, people. People don't like it. If they don't like it, they can they can watch tomorrow on a different stream. That's that's fine by me. Um, you know that I I would never expect anyone to follow all of my content. <laughs> it's just so, I, I put out well, too much. Well, see, 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 Nick, it, it, it's the issue of being right. Okay, it pisses people off. Okay, of guessing correctly what where everything is going and saying so. It just pisses people off. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You know, when when I said that uh, Sargon was full of shit and uh, that uh, he was in on the whole Kraut uh, doxing server and all that shit, right? People gave me a ton of shit for it, right? That was in December of seventeen, and all of two thousand eighteen just proved that I was right. And, and yeah, it, it's 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 that's the situation when you correctly anticipate uh, that somebody's full of shit and you say so. It pisses people off when you point to the emperor, the naked emperor, and says that man has no clothes. It pisses people off, you know. Yeah, because they don't want their heroes besmirched, and so they have like a cow, like an immature little children. Quite frankly, they have a tantrum, and so they fling shit at the guy who said so, who said, you know, the emperor has no clothes. I'd said so about Sargon, and people gave me a ton of shit back then in the day. Right. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I said so about the recent drama of these fools and what's going on. What's happening? Huh? You tell me. Oh, it's a complete shit show. And we're not going to talk about it because I'm not interested because I, these guys are, <laughs> so fuck them, you know, but, yeah. but the point is people hate my guts because I point out what's right and they hate that fact. And it's not my fault. Okay. But, sure. you know, they identify, they throw the shit my way because I was right. So, it's their immaturity that they have to deal with. Okay. Sure. I don't have to deal with anything. Okay. Sorry. About uh, that. No, ahead. no, that's fine. You're, you're my guest. You can talk. That's allowed. Uh, Doge <laughs> meat says coach. Nobody wanted you on the kill stream. Uh, ear juice says gunt lovers in chat. Love, butt play. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Okay. Sh shots fired. Uh, We'll leave that there. Dominic Alexander says, this is my first ever super chat and I got to head to bed, but why did coach dox his own son? Thanks. Um, I think that must be the video you put out uh, just a, just what, two days ago or yesterday? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, he's a just turned four year old child and how exactly he's going to be doxed. And it was for a very specific purpose. And I just, because a lot of people were saying that I didn't even have a kid. Okay. They're saying that I've like invented my life and that I'm not <laughs> one guy says that I'm not even my uh, that my actual name is not even true and that I've never been an author. One guy has said and he said this publicly repeatedly that I don't speak Spanish and I'm not from Latin America. Do you want to speak some? La, can you give, give me some Spanish? Give me some hot Spanish. Que es la cosa más absurda que he escuchado en mi puta vida que alguien diga que yo no sé hablar español. Es como estúpido, pero eh, hay estupidez en todos lados. Uh, you know, look, that was not it, Spanish. It's... Why are you lying, coach? That was like, <laughs> that was Vietnamese. Clearly, I'm a language. Vietnamese, right. I'm, a... I'm actually Vietnamese. Yeah, you caught me. You know? <laughs> I'm a language That's expert. That. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. But like, uh, no, it, it's just all, all kinds of shit is, is said about me. You know, one moron actually went so far as to say that that um, that images of my kid were CGI. I wish I were kidding. I'm not. A fool actually said that on a live stream, said that I had CGI'd uh, a, a stock child into the footage of me and my kid, which is just crazy. It's, it's just crazy, crazy. But, you know, people will, uh, like I said, you know, when you kill their sacred cows, they hate your guts for it. Okay. If you're the butcher of sacred cows, they hate your guts for it. They, well, until they're they hate buying it when you point out the truth. Until they're mm -hmm. buying that sweet sacred meat. Um, okay, yeah. next next is Dirty D disagrees. Says Nick's chat in full revolt. Well, I mean it's bound to happen from time to time. Axelion says K. Julio Santoyo says K twice, three times. Axelion says K again. The end says Ricada for president twenty twenty four. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Uh, the country would. Sure. That would be an abject disaster uh, for my personal life, but the country would be in good shape because I'm the only guy who can run this. I'm, I'm the and only. Build a wall. I'm the and only build man. Build a wall, right? Uh, my wall would be terrific, uh, absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> uh, I'm the only man who could pilot this ship. Uh, let's see. Uh, act, uh, Frank Underwood says, "Please ask if the podcast with Benway will return." Uh, yes, I, I, I do the, I used to do the, I did a full season of 120 episodes with uh, Benway, Dr. Benway, who is my podcasting partner, and they were terrific shows, but we just needed a hiatus because we got a little burned out, you know, and it was inevitable. And so I'm like doing now the coach stream, uh, which is a, a, a three times weekly uh, 
the stream where I talk about finance and economics and business. And, uh, and that's coming along really great. I'm really happy with it. Uh, the Coach and Benway show will come back at some point. Uh, Benway and I haven't discussed it yet, but uh, I at least think the world of Benway. And uh, yeah, he's a terrific uh, podcast partner. It's just we just needed a break. We just needed a little hiatus. Sure, sure. Uh, Femfix says KKK Ick. I think that's KK Kick. Uh, but also with KKK, so that's interesting. Nunya Biz says, Tonight, the part of Shane's chair will be played by a somehow more worn piece of leather covered in additional body hair. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> goodness gracious. <laughs> that, that was, was large. I, I love chat because they've got the best burns. Uh, yeah, Tange, pretty good. Tange Tange says, If you were in charge of their legal team, what would your next move be for the defense distributed case? Also, has there being uh, has there been any news for Cody's case? Cody's case is hard to find because it's in state court in Austin, and so you have to pay for the documents. Um, I, I'm still trying to get some resource to get me those documents, so I don't know what the news is there. Uh, if I were Defense Distributed's legal team, I mean, what's the story there? I don't know. Uh, this is the guy who 3D print who who does the Defense Distributed was a company oh, that was. Yeah distributing yeah. uh the cad files for 3d printed guns right yeah and uh cody wilson was their ceo until he got uh caught banging a 16 year old in texas which um he's lucky he didn't get drugged behind a uh, a a truck and shot uh by a texas dad although although i will say there's some problems with that case and uh i don't i don't know what cody's gonna do but it's the type of accusation that that runs into the ground um, I actually did a defense, a video, how you would defend Cody Wilson and uh, YouTube permanently demonetized it and put it in the black hole of the algorithm. So, um, really? so that's, that's lovely. Uh, but uh, defense distributed um, had, was charged with I uh, the case. Yeah. Yeah. They they're charged with crimes from the government uh, for distributing this information. Then they came to an agreement with the federal government and then a bunch of uh, a bunch of turbo cuck uh, attorney generals, like 22 attorney generals led by uh, attorney general gruel of New Jersey um, have filed suit in the ninth circuit. Yes. The New Jersey attorney general filed suit in the ninth circuit uh, <laughs> uh, against, which is the left coast, obviously, uh, against um, against Defense Distributed. Defense Distributed also sued in Texas, but the Texas case dismissed it for lack of personal jurisdiction over the other attorney generals. But the attorney generals were able to get Defense Distributed to have personal jurisdiction in California somehow, even though they don't do specific business there. It's just a nonsense case. What's the next step? I, I don't know because the legal proceedings have gotten very, very convoluted. Um, and And so I don't know what... Uh, I don't know exactly where they are. So I don't what the next step would be. So far, they've been relying on the government to try and win the case against the state governments. And I think the Fed should win that case. So hopefully, hopefully they won't have to do anything because it'll be moot. Otherwise, they should just uh, they should just put USB sticks on pasties of strippers and have you go into strip clubs and buy them right off their tits. Uh, that's what I would do. Uh, Pongo D says, coach, you sexy beast. If I was a woman, you would be first in line to have my abortion, uh, which is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, call me back after the HRT treatment. please. There you go. There you go. Uh, would, uh, okay. Real question. Now that you mention it, would you, would you, uh, is there some level of attractiveness for a trap that you would, uh, you would put down yeah. for it? Traps are gay. What about post-op? Traps are gay. Okay. I'm glad you, I'm glad you've clarified that. So like, no, and also, also the thing is frankly, transsexual individuals of either sex or whichever sex or whatever non-binary or what have you, these are people with serious mental problems. Okay. I don't fuck schizophrenics and I don't suggest anybody else do so either. Okay. By the same token, you know, these people with serious, serious mental issues should be avoided like the plague insofar as any kind of romantic entanglement is concerned. It would be crazy. These people are, are, they need psychiatric help. They do not need the state or the general population to be indulging in their fantasies. These people are not people of the opposite sex. They are very confused individuals. Some of them are homosexual men or, or young boys who go through a, a, a transitional tr uh, tranny phase 
Milo Yiannopoulos has talked about this, as a matter of fact, which and it was very interesting. I did not know myself. I mean, obviously, because I'm heterosexual and I've never gone through any kind of like cross-dressing phase. But apparently homosexual boys or, or young men who will eventually become homosexual men do often, like 90 percent of the time, go through a cross-dressing phase. And so, you, you know, you're you're uh, whatever you think of homosexuality, uh, a young man who will become a homosexual man. Uh, you know, going through such a phase should not be turned into a woman. It's crazy, okay? All this crap of, of children being given these very, very powerful drugs that render them permanently sterile for crying out loud. This is a disaster. And now there's like, a, you know, a rapid onset uh, sexual dysphoria, which is basically teenage girls in a little clique in junior high getting all hysterical, as teenage girls have done since time immemorial, and they all convince themselves that they're all actually boys and they all want to get mastectomies and get, go on uh, human re um, hormone replacement therapy and become boys. And the parents are allowing this shit. I find it, it it's crazy. Okay. I, sorry for the rant here, but you know, these people. Oh, come you're on. not Dennis Miller. You don't get to apologize for rants. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, obviously. <laughs> Um, no, the, uh, the interesting thing about that is why wouldn't you want to become a woman where you can be listened and believed? Um, <laughs> good that, point. Yeah. That said, Mithrin Emmer says Nick with the T's again, that's about Vic Mignogna. And thank you kind sir for assisting me with my upcoming project. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mithrin, Mithrin, um, so soy boy board, soy board pan boy says, Thank these hating cucks for cash and views. Uh, thank you, hating cucks for cash and views. Uh, Axelian says, a true narcissist on full display. Notice how it's always about him and his fake expressions. Okay. okay. Uh, the Shield. The Shield says, Mr. Ricada, I sent you two DMs on Twitter asking if you can recommend a lawyer for my female friend in Georgia. Uh, she could really use the help finding a good lawyer, please. If you could read the message when you can, thank you. I will do so. I will do so. I'll try and find it specifically. Um, I've just gotten, I've gotten so many with the Vic stuff that I, I'm trying to get through all of them. So I apologize if it takes a few days. Uh, Am Ampathy Ampathos guy says, this whole spiel has crushed my dream to be a voice actor. Sorry about that, buddy. Earju says, Fem Vic gloats about killing kids. WTF psycho. Okay. Amtank says, Nick has a bunch of fans. Who is this Nick person? I have no idea. Uh, Dirty D disagree says, stop ignoring your chat, Nick. I know you see us. I'm not ignoring you. Uh, I was waiting till we got to the appropriate time to do super chats. Uh, Lazarian444 says, reading the super chat made Shane rage quit. Joyous. Yeah, uh, Shane was not good at taking criticism from the chat and uh he did have to he did have to leave after he was called uh some version of soy for like the 15th time good job good job shane good job making the meme a reality uh mexa man and cheese says tactics are from how to destroy a male real book yes but i've heard that the same author wrote how to destroy a female um i don't know if i can confirm or deny that but i've heard that dirty d disagrees riot in the chat k to kick crp Zero the Slayer says, oh, poop, Ron Soye Toye boy went and protected his tweets. Stunning and brave of Ron Soye Toye boy. Too bad. I've already screenshotted his tweet, sent it to my attorney. I will not be harassed. Oh, also the, the Interpol. Uh, I will not be harassed. Have a good night, Ron Soy boy. Uh, Joey Jojo says, coach looks like Jack Baker from Resident Evil 7. Do you play many yeah. Resident Evil games, coach? I don't play video games because I'm not 13, and I know that this is an unpopular you opinion. You liar! But... Don't lie to me. You are 13. You're drinking Jägermeister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that makes me 13. No. Yeah, I don't play video games, so I wouldn't know. Listless Azure says Twitter DM'd you false claim data. Oh, okay. Eric Harrison says Nick, why would you have this piece of crap on? He's a literal baby killer and an oxygen thief. Uh, have you stolen any oxygen lately? Uh, uh, right now, as I'm breathing, I think. Oh, I thought I figured they meant like tanks of it. Like I could see you walking oh. into an old folks home and be like, screw your stoma. I've got this tank that needs taken. And just yeah, <laughs> exactly. <out> it. <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> it's because I, I have all sorts of people on and, and some people you will like and some people you might not. That's OK. Namrek Isto says, Nick, I have always believed in Vic. I have Asperger's high functioning. And because of it. 
had stuff that drew bullies from all directions. I entered a very, very dark place, continued in part two. Ooh, the drama. Uh, Ferd Reich says, I slip. Okay. Uh, and then Z's sleepy faces and beds. Uh, I didn't, I don't even know how to do all these emotes. Uh, Underdog Anomaly says, Ron Toye protected his tweets just now. SoCal Chris says, Nick, finish him. Uh, I don't finish men. That's uh that's, that's a job for a different gender. <laughs> um, Kiara that's Hardy. So Kiara Hardy says, I know some of you hate him, but if we censor him, how are we any better than the kick vickers that try to censor us? We should be better than that. Uh, yeah, I don't believe in censorship. Joey Jojo says, get, get Allison Tiemann on stream to talk about her lawsuit and appeals case against Calgary Expo and the Mary Sue. She got screwed over by them. I had her on before her appeals case was filed. Um, I have not... I've not talked to her in a while, but uh, I'm not opposed to having her on again. I, I'm curious how her... Uh, appeal has gone i heard she hired a lawyer that is not disbarred uh and that that's an interesting thing groy groy pex jones says nick please ask crp why he murdered a baby why did you murder a baby coach i didn't murder any baby but okay but did you not not murder a baby <laughs> that's a that's a lawyer trick we use double negatives um next is socal chris said did crp plagiarize himself well plagiarism necessarily involves something you don't own i think yeah. i think uh that's the, the yeah. trick of it yeah uh, if, if you if you recycle your own stories you're just recycling your own stories and people do it all the time so did you you said earlier that you uh you had optioned this story for a movie right like that no was... no, no 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 oh okay no. I, so let, let me you just, optioned a just different so story. that we're on on the on the record so that there's yeah, absolutely yeah. no doubt okay and you're a lawyer okay yeah what i had said was that my previous novel acrobat was sold to miramax mm. it was sold outright okay not optioned okay sold which which means that they really wanted to make a movie out of it but it didn't happen because of the death of the writer director okay now the the novel that i outlined after it back in 2001 2002 uh, was called a kidnapping. It was just a provisional title, and is basically the story that's in Wilshire Boulevard. Sure. Now that story in 2005, 2004, 2005, I turned it into a, a movie in Spanish in Chile, set of course in Chile. And uh, then in 2015, you know, uh, and by the way, I own that movie. I own it uh, by way of a company that I that I own in Chile, and it's my copyright. I own it, and it was my script, and that's that. Um, what you call it? Uh, I did bring in two script writers to help me with the Spanish because, uh, my Spanish at the time was a little bit weak. It, it had too many Americanisms. Do, was but your was Spanish my... drinking soy milk at the time? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. no, but, uh, yo soy, anyway, it, yo soy it, it, espanol. <laughs> sorry. That's, <laughs> that's the amount of Spanish I know. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but but what happened was that in 2015, when I wanted to, I, I'd actually written a couple of other projects that had gotten away from me, new projects, but they'd gotten away from me, and I just written overwritten, and you know, and so I needed a a defined story. So it was sort of like I needed like a skeleton to build a, a, a novel on, and so I figured, well, you know, I, I got this, and I own it, which is the important thing, and it's mine. I wrote it. It's my story. And uh, in the sense that I am the actual author, and so I can claim the moral right to it, and I am the copyright holder. And so I just use that basic story to write Wilshire Boulevard. You know, it, it has uh, many of the plot beats, but not all of them, because I modified a lot of them. And of course, all the prose is original prose, new prose that I wrote for this book. And I'm saying this because people are, again, you know, they, they want to shit on you and smear you any way they can. And so, you know, the, the, this bullshit that, oh, you know, I'm plagiarizing myself, it's just stupid, okay? And by the way, lots of writers and uh, filmmakers recycle stories because it's sometimes, for various reasons, it's easier. Um, Michael Haneke uh, did the same movie, the exact same movie, twice that he had written. He did one version in French and one version in English. I think it was Hidden. Uh, but I could be wrong. I, f I forget which one. But Michael Haneke is a big time European director. I've never and, heard of uh, him. You know, no, stupid, RC, stu RC. stupid European directors. I don't even believe they exist. <laughs> yeah. And so he did the same his, same, his own movie twice. So could you say that he plagiarized himself? How would that work? 
You, you see what I'm saying? Well, and I mean, it's there, this crap that they're flinging to, to try to smear me some more, you know? There is a way to plagiarize yourself, but it involves uh, you not having the rights to the property at the time that right. you that you Yeah, take like John it. Fogarty. Like right. John Fogarty. Yeah, with, John, with, John Fogarty. You know uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Prince, Prince had similar things, too. That's why uh, much respect to the lawyers who made Prince lose his name in court. That's my favorite story from lawyers ever. Uh, even though I, you know, Prince, Prince is a, you know, legendary musician, but, but the fact that he lost his name to lawyers is funny to me. Uh, crackling cow says, is it true? CRP lives in his office. Is that true? No, it's oh. not. It's, again, another bullshit smear. Yeah. What if your office was really nice though? Uh, then, then you could. It, it is. You, you can, you can see behind me. You see it? It's that office is to be fair guys that office is much bit that has more square footage than shane's house uh it's, it's uh 650 square feet uh nimrek namrek isto says part two. Oh, this is the the stunning conclusion a friend yep. decided that to pull me out of the sorrow and violent anger they introduced me to an anime full metal alchemist after that i wanted to meet and thank the voice actor who pulled me out of my sadness Vic was that voice actor. Well, that is, that's what I was saying about Vic is he seems like a genuine human who actually cares about people, uh, actually cares about people that he interacts with. John Murphy says, ask C. Reesburg P how much his mail order wife cost. Uh, how much, how much did she cost? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, no, she, she was free, but the upkeep is, several thousands of dollars per month <laughs> now your your wife is is ukrainian right yeah, and yeah. I, I met am, her in uh, germany yeah i imagine she she's very expensive <laughs> on the whole uh ukrainian women just something about them uh makes me think that they cost a lot to upkeep uh very not not in a derogatory way at all um the ukraine well, you know let me ask you about your wife i mean you know it, it it costs you a pretty penny to uh to support her i take it oh shocking shocking amounts of money <laughs> yeah yeah once you're married you know your your wallet is no longer your own you know what i'm saying oh yeah i believe me i haven't seen it in 12 years uh that's only because we had like a honeymoon period before that because i've been married god this year i'll be a, i'll have been married for 15 years it's crazy wow. um I've just, been married now for six, six, yeah. Oh yeah, well, it gets it gets pricier, but in the best <laughs> ways. In the best ways. Justin Vincent says, "How does bragging about convincing your mistress to abort and having extramarital affairs fit in with being a man? Does your son deserve to have a father who is a man and faithful to his mom?" Uh, so that's a separate. Well, I mean, I guess that was implied with the initial stuff, but uh, did you want to address that at all, or no, or no? Well, I already did, and it's okay. boring. Sure. Know? I didn't know if you had anything to add, so I just wanted to check. Siren Jag says, CRP, you read my you read my book, Nick. What did you think? Nick, oh, don't drag me into this dumpster fire, buddy. I don't remember saying that at all. Then it made my life complete as Nick Ricada dragged that book. No, I did not drag that book. And he's only read up to page 15. No, 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 no. I've read much more than that. I'll be completing the book. And uh, I certainly don't want anyone to think that I'm dragging the book. I think there are some edits that can be made because uh, when you get a publisher, that's part of the publishing house agreement is that they do the editing process. And, and I think an editor is, is useful because I always think that it's better to get a second opinion on your book who will go through it without your own personal emotional investment in it. Um, I was, like I said, I was a writing major. I know that that process is real. I know that that process is painful uh, to deal with. And and coach asked me for honest feedback. So I absolutely uh, give it to him um, in that way. And I, I think that's what uh, you were looking yeah. for, right? Yeah, exactly right. And I, look, I've been a professional writer my entire, or let me phrase that. I was a professional writer for the beginning of my career. Okay. And of course the the feedback and edits are necessary. If you take it personally, then you're screwed. You're never going to be able to succeed in the business. And I earned a living as a writer for quite a number of years. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't have a problem with uh, edits or editorial comments or suggestions or, or criticisms or what have you. I mean, that's part of the ball game. So, yeah, no problem. Uh, Axelian says, you mad, bro. Uh, I'm not, but I am a million degrees and itching like a crackhead. So I apologize <laughs> 
I apologize if I look like one of my criminal clients. Like, <laughs> you know, that's just how it goes. Dice David says, you should speak like you write less. Uh, Itchy... Ichi Cinco Negrosaki says, I hate you, Nick Smiley Face. I did, I'm getting mixed signals. Uh, I will make out with you immediately. Uh, Ampathos Guy says, Hey guys, I was wondering if I could email you a small excerpt of a story I want to write and would like some pointers based on that little bit. Uh, if you want to do that, you know where to email me, buddy. Uh, I don't did know. Did it for me. Did what, it for me. Okay, where where can they email you, Coach? Or do you, do you have a place where they coach, can find it? Yeah, Coach Redpill at gmail.com. There you go. There you go. Doge Meat says CRP Boomer. Uh, I think that's, I mean, you are literally Boomer, right? Or no, wait, no, are no, you? No, no, I'm a Gen Xer. Gen, a Gen X. Xer. Gen X. I am too. I like to pretend anyway. Uh, no, yeah, I was born in 68, which is like the beginning of the Generation X. And I take it you're born near the end of the generation, I suppose. Yeah, 81. I'm on that. I'm in that uncomfortable period that no one can figure out if I'm Gen X or if I'm millennial. Uh, so that's that's where my life is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack Dirac says Gamergate wasn't limited to games. There was also a group which talked about social justice ruining sci fi publishing. Look up sad yeah. puppies and rapid puppies. I've actually that I've could, had. Yeah. I've had Vox Day on the stream, so I am familiar with that. And I do think that it was good that he broke the uh, Hugo Awards. Uh, Scotty J says, CRP, I have a polarizing personality. Translation, I'm a lying drama whore. Whoa. Uh, okay. Lazarian444 says, strange how many CRP detractors are here. Uh, well, I can only say thank you for watching. Uh, Raru, <laughs> yeah, Raru, you should have me on more often, man. You get <laughs> shitloads of super chats from my haters, man. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. Uh, Raru, Let, the let's do this. Let's do this. You know, next time I'm on, we we split the super chats from my haters. Uh, I don't split super chats with anybody. <laughs> I'm Sorry, I'm this is capitalism, totally baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raru, the red mage says, "What's your favorite weird boy?" Oh gosh, I don't. Uh, I'm not a big orc fan, so I don't know. Do you have a favorite weird boy, Coach? Do you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, weird boys are the psychers of the orc race in Warhammer 40k. So they're like, uh, they have, oh god, no, have, I don't know. I, you know, if you talk to me about, you know, which motorcycle you like, because I'm thinking of getting a motorcycle, and uh, I, I'm like thinking, I'm like inching up to it because I really want to have one. You know, now that spring's coming and summer and stuff. Uh, yeah, I can talk about motorcycles, but Warhammer, I'm sorry. That's not in my pay grade. <laughs> well, it should be because Warhammer should be in everybody's uh, pay grade. Joe Lugo says, objectively, CRP seems like an all right dude. I had to keep you in suspense there. Uh, if Thank was, you. Uh, Appreciate it. Rutt says, haters just don't want to hear CRP speak truth uh am tank this is defamatory this is outright defamatory i will not stand for this on my stream and i'm gonna i'm going to we're gonna have we're gonna have a discussion about this um how what, dare you statement? sir it says this nick is an imposter he hasn't drunk anything <laughs> this is my third my third yeah, I, was, I was thinking the same thing i was thinking that you were nick's doppelganger mm -mm -mm. you know I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that made me think that maybe it's Nick is the giant headphones. Yeah, but that's... other than that, I wasn't really sure. You know? I almost bought some different headphones today. Oh, but then, then I, I would have called. I, I would have called bullshit on you. I would have yeah. said, no, that's not the real Nick. He's not drinking. He's got the weird headphones. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've. That's my third. That's my third uh, whiskey. That's probably where I'm going to draw the line tonight, uh, because I, I do have to wake up in the morning. Um, and not in, <laughs> okay, not in the afternoon, not in you're the afternoon. Until you don't wake up in the morning. No, oh, well, God. until you get to wake up in the afternoon, right? Like that's the, that's the Friday night stream when Saturday you don't have the, the obligations in the morning. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Rugal Midgal, Migdal says, thanks for answering my question. Honestly, uh, I hope to never give you anything less than honesty. Uh, angry weeb man says, so I'm sitting here. Barbecue sauce on my titties. Well, you got to lick that off, buddy. Uh, Dubler says, CRP, my brother, is, <laughs> my brother is dating the ex of his discarded worthless friend after your videos. 
Also, you don't need to dignify everything with a defense. It's a weak look. Uh, there you go. Fair enough. Fair point. Blaine, 20- it's that sometimes you know, sometimes you know, you get assaulted by so many, uh, by repeated calls about some bullshit that you think to yourself, well, maybe I have to address it because so many people are saying this shit that I, I, I have to address it, right? Uh, sure. Good point. Sometimes it's just better to just ignore all the shit, no matter what. But- I disagree. I go full fist straight through the rectum. Yeah. On any and all criticism ever. <laughs> No, uh, whatever <laughs> criticism I see though, I go full board, but that's the lawyer in me, right? Like you son of a, you, uh, you mess with me. Well, criticism, with- criticism is different from, uh, slanders. Not okay. in my world. Somebody Cause crit- I'm perfect. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. I kid. Yeah. I kid. No, of course, of course you have to let, uh, a lot of it roll out. Cause anytime you put yourself in public, um, you, people are going to have differing opinions. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Uh, we, of course, are people who have put our faces to our statements, which is yep. not uh, not the most common thing these days. Um, but so we we certainly uh, I think we do need to address what I do personally is I address things that try to impugn my professional character as a uh, as a lawyer. I don't really care if people hate me as a YouTuber or whatever, or, or in my, you know, my various opinions, because no one agrees with me on everything. If they did, life would be boring. But, um, when you try and say that I, I don't carry myself ethically as a lawyer, that's when I actually do respond, uh, to pretty much all of them. Um, mainly because that's, you know, that's something I worked very hard for and take very, very seriously. And I don't think, uh, the stupid cucks on the internet, or actually they're not cucks. It's mostly, it's mostly sad women, um, over on pull, uh, for example, or sad women like Ron Toye, uh, who can't, who can't handle, um, a legal opinion. And so they say that I must be, I must be lying or unethical in my profession just because I call them like a Sandy vagina or something. Um, let me just tell oh, you man. that I have first amendment privilege to call, uh, everybody a Sandy vagina and I will use it as liberally as possible. You disgusting sure, flappy the lady. Yeah, the, the bar association is not going to kick you out just because you call somebody that has a Sandy vagina. Right? No, absolutely not. Uh, well, not yet. Not yet. You we'll know, see. Unless, we'll see. I yeah. guess. Well, uh, the disbarred stream will be will be an interesting one, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and I, I keep getting told it's coming. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to be disbarred immediately. Um, stand with Vic says CRP. Quick advice: brevity, less stories, less speeches. Uh, okay. Uh, Blaine twenty says I've enjoyed listening to you and Coach. Thanks for having him on. It's my pleasure. Uh, Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, J. Mac Von Kaze says, Nick, as a Scotch man, I'm curious. What's your opinion of Glenn Fittick and Johnny Double Black? I enjoyed them both over Xmas and became a new man. Uh, depends on the Glenn Fittick. Johnny is my go-to at a bar because I know the bottle is always fresh. Uh, so a Johnny Black, a Johnny Double Black. I know the bottle's always fresh. Sometimes when you go buy like a $35, $40 glass of whiskey at a bar, depending on the bar, they don't get bought very often. And so you might get a bottle that's like a year old and you get a skunk glass. And that really sucks when you just dumped, uh, you know, a couple, a couple Hamiltons on it. Um, the Texan, the Texan 83. Uh, I, I go Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Walker black. Yeah. That's always, that's always a safe bet. Yep. It's a safe bet at a bar. Uh, unless you know the bar, if you know the bar, go, go ham. The Texan 83 says real quick, Nick, ask this guy if he has a smoothing plane. If he doesn't, I refuse to acknowledge his woodworking skills. Lol. Do you have a smoothing plane? Yes, I do. Do you want me to show it to you? Uh, well that, that sounds a little sexual. Um, oh, dang it. uh, I I, forgot. I I was going to use a line from your book on you. What? And I completely forgot it was uh, it was the line, you know, when you're supposed to ask me, what did you think of my book? And I was supposed to ask me that I was supposed to respond. That's a loaded question. Sounds like, what did you think of me? Right. Like that's oh, the yeah. I was supposed yeah. to steal that conversational line to let you yeah. know that I've read that far in the book. That was my plan. But, you know, I screwed it up. So thank you. It's okay. thank, thanks, coach. Thanks for doing that to me. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, to answer the question about the smoothing plane, yes, I do have a smoothing plane. I uh, just got a new one, a little one, 
Um, and uh, yeah, and and uh, I use it occasionally for delicate work. Yeah, but but for the most part, I I tend to use just a, a machine planer. It's just quicker and easier. And then I use the little one to do like delicate stuff, delicate touch ups. Yeah, that that's that's my approach to to using planers. Uh, just a second. Uh, thank you for answering that. I was I was answering a question in the chat there. Um, someone said, stop skipping super chats. I have not. I've probably just not gotten to it yet. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, okay. Prison Tyrone says, coach, stop lying. You copied Aaron Clary, uh, butthole consulting, although he used, he used the profanity. I, I never have used profanity in my life because you were a fan of his many years back and now you are deflecting. Uh, so there. No, I, but okay, fine. You know, I mean, if you want to believe that, you can believe whatever you want. But this is not true. There you go. Uh, Caleb Cooney says, "Just walking in, and I'm lost. Can I get a small recap? Also, take my money. I will gladly take your money." The small recap is we're having an interview with Coach Red Pill about culture, about being a man, and about uh, his book, Wilshire Boulevard, which is in the description. You can check it out on Indiegogo. Uh, Ear Juice says, "CRP was interesting. Might finally watch." Ego, though. Ego, thou. Ego, thou. Uh, but I think he meant though. Uh, Jacob Bodmer says, if he says emperor has no clothes one more time. <laughs> Apparently, okay. they're not a fan of that. Uh, uh, what, what is it? An illusion? Perfectly uh, fine. Kuro Beep. Maple. Yeah. Kuro Beep Boop says, not sure why everyone is pissing and moaning. This is a fun stream. Uh, I think Thank so. I have, I, have fun on, I have fun on every stream, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm enjoying myself and I, I hope the audience is too, you know? So, yeah. Well, either they're enjoying themselves or they're enjoying themselves in hatred, which is, I'm, I'm okay either way. <laughs> entertainment, entertainment isn't always positive. Sometimes you're entertained by uh, being horrified. So, uh, Sakaki Onzai says, I think the only reason why I said he was boring uh, because the timbre of his voice, he got better during super chats, just no monologues, please. Uh, we okay. we don't we Good don't want to know. catch you monologuing here, Coach. Uh, yeah. Jason Groot he says, "How much is Ralph and Andy's bail likely to be from their rampage in Miami?" <laughs> I haven't been following it. I've been getting uh, updates that are that are very very uh, vague and uh, not useful for me to determine something like that. Um, I'll have to talk to them later and see what's going on. Mimaru Dolphy says, "Coach has my support. Thanks for your integrity, heart. Thank you." Uh, Thank you. That's, who said that, by the way? That was Mimaru Dolphy. Mimaru Dolphy. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say, Mimaru. Uh, Dice David says, gender dysphoria equals schizophrenia. Okay, champ. Uh, so apparently they disagree with you on that. Uh, yeah, they can disagree. Kazamakidon. Why is, why is there so much Japanese happening? I, guys, the, the liquor's hitting and the Japanese has to stop. Uh, just like in World War II, the Japanese has to stop. Uh, it is important to give voice even to those we don't agree with, or we quickly become just as bad as hashtag kick Vic and other injustice we hate. Glad you are keeping yep. coach on. Uh, of course, of course. Like I said, uh, I'm a man of my word. And, and just because uh, if people tell me they're not going to like something, that's just a, that's a consequence I deal with. And that's okay. Uh, Dark Lamont says, coach Boomer pill. You have claimed that you have millions of dollars in assets can you prove any of this? CRP is boring. Okay. Well, number one, I don't think I've ever said such a thing. And if I did, it was very stupid of me. And number two, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, I also have millions. Oh, and that of I'm boring? Okay. Well, shrug. <laughs> what can I say? I have millions of dollars in assets, and I will prove it to you. Uh, just as soon as you prove it to me, I don't know what that means. Oh, uh, that's a good one. I, that, that was literally a throwaway statement. God, having millions of dollars in liquid assets would be great. Wouldn't it? Uh, if you could just, sure. uh, if you could just Wilshire Boulevard, spend everything, I'd be happy. Uh, now, actually, I don't know if I would. I think people are very unhappy. Uh, and it's not related to, it's not because they have money that they're unhappy. It's just, they're either happy or unhappy, whether or not they have money. That's, that's not well, uh, there are two things, I think. That, number one, sometimes you have too much money and you become a slave to the money and you're not able to really enjoy life. And, and that, that happens. Uh, on the other hand, you have to admit, you know, 90, 95% of people's problems can be solved with money. 
If they had more money, the problem would go away. Wrong. Health if you problem, I've got to disagree you know, with your first point because if you ever throw a Lamborghini at a homeless person, you are happy. You are happy. So too much money is no, not a no, problem. No, 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 it's no, a no. lack it, of it, it's a lack of uh, ingenuity in how you use that too much money. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there, there comes. A, I've noticed that there comes a point where you have too much money, and it it does make you unhappy because you start pursuing more and more, and you start. It, it's sort of like uh, when a channel has like a lot of subscribers, a lot of viewers, and they start, uh, you know, chasing the views because they want more subscribers and more viewers, uh, and they start losing sight of what the channel is about, and because of it, they start pursuing it more and more, and the channel starts to fade because they, they want it too much you know that that happens with money too yeah sure well i no i watched hostel i know what happens when you have enough money uh you get to just you get to just straight murder people that's a joke that's a joke <laughs> uh hunter king says the losers asking you to kick crp are betas they can't handle disagreement can't handle a challenge at least they're good pay pigs uh if i've got pay pigs doesn't well that mean said. but well doesn't said. that Aren't pay pigs people who are like feeders? Like I, I'm not getting pizza shoved in my mouth right now. So I'm actually, I don't want pizza. I want raw beef. Uh, Waifu Sans Frontiers says obligatory. Who's your favorite chaos god? Now I know you're not a 40k fan. Uh, no idea what it is. You, uh, are, yeah. nobody's, nobody's perfect. Uh, and you, you <laughs> sir, are very flawed for not knowing about 40k, but. Let me give you four names and you have to pick one at random and the gods will decide your fate. Okay. okay. So you've got Nurgle, Corn, Slanesh, and Seench. Who do you choose? Corn sounds the better of the very bad names. But Ooh, okay, corn. Bad names. How dare you? These are the four chaos gods. Okay, uh, Corn. Don't it's besmirch corn. their good name. Corn, K H O R N E, is the blood god. Uh, that's oh, a that's a good choice. That's a good choice. Interesting. interesting. Uh, let, okay. Let's see. Having uh, no idea what this means, man. I I hope that m my choosing to be corn does not mean that at some point the NSA will like tap my phones and the FBI will have me under surveillance. Well, if they are, you can just collect their skulls for the skull throne. That's how that works. Uh, <laughs> okay. Good to know. CRP's aborted baby says CRP. We dislike you for being a hypocrite, not for your idea of truth. You beta pickup artist LARPer for school shooters. Nick, please don't bring any more Chilean Shanes on your stream. You're down like 7K viewers. Wow, that was a that was brutal. Eesh. That was harsh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would invite me after that kind of comment. Yeah, yeah. A for effort on that one. Wow. Uh, yeah. Prison Tyrone says, Coach, if it's your story, why don't you credit Julio Rojas in your book? He is the other writer listed on the IMDb for your movie. Um, do you want to uh, talk? Yeah, no, but that, that, that's not accurate. It's Julio Rojas and Paola del Fierro. Uh, and they took the story that uh, I gave them. Uh, that was the original story, which I had submitted to my publishers back in 2001 to be my follow-up uh, novel to Acrobat. And uh, yeah, they uh, they started doing the work on the script, and then I finished it. And it's my script; it's my story. Uh, but both of them worked on the script. Of course, they did. But it's yeah. my script because I own it, and I came up with the story. You know, so yeah, he's just. Uh, and I don't have to give any kind of credit to Julio Rojas and Paola del Fierro on uh, Wilshire Boulevard because I wrote that novel on my own. Now, okay? what? So I. I let me let me help out with this. I think I think I can. Uh, in in screenwriting, what you do is you write a script, and then yeah. you e either you or a studio will bring in a scriptwriter to do contract work on cleaning up dialogue, uh, making something more authentic if they have expertise in it, uh, yep. or or just. Like this is what Lucas, George Lucas should have done in all of the original Star Wars is to bring in better writers for the dialogue because he's he's a big story guy. He's not uh, he's clearly not good at interpersonal communication, because if you look at the communication that happens on screen in the early Star Wars, it's cancer. You're, you're, you're talking about the prequels, right? No, I'm talking about the original movies. Uh, well, the second one, the Empire was the best one. It was but, lit, written by Lee Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan, and that was good dialogue. Okay, well, they should they should uh, Minecraft themselves for that dialogue, in my opinion. I hate all of it. 
Uh, I don't, oh, I don't yeah. agree. I don't agree at all. But, but either way, you bring in a script writer uh, to fix a special part of the script, and sometimes it's literally one scene that they really want to nail because the scene's important, and they get credited as a writer in the movie. That's how the writing credits work. It doesn't mean that they actually have any ownership interest in it. So I hope yeah. that clears that up for people because that is that is part of the industry, uh, and that's that's how it goes. Uh, El Peo. Peru. Oh, by the way, and oh. just just to polish off that point, see, and and you know, to end any kind of conversation about this, because if there are other super chats on this issue, you know, I'll just ignore it. See, it, it's it's an effort to shit on me in any way that they can, you know, and it's it's just uh, stupid and transparent, and uh, you know, it, it's basically followers of a certain YouTuber whom I'm not going to name, who just uh, don't like the fact that I was right. Well, they can eat turds as far as I'm concerned. Oh, know? I have to be clear. Uh, the dialogue in the prequels was also garbage. I'm not giving that up. Oh, that pass. was horrible. That was uh, famously horrible. But I, but Empire it had good dialogue. Uh, maybe I have to rewatch it, but man, I, I, I don't like, again, the story fine, the dialogue, ugh, mm, mm, uh. but you know, some of the best writers in history have had bad dialogue. Hemingway, for example, uh, terrible dialogue. But uh, great, great book writer. Uh, anyway, well, no, you know what he was doing was was he was doing the flat affect of the minimalist approach. I'm not so, so sure you could say that he had quote unquote bad dialogue. He didn't. Oh, have I can say it. Dialogue. Check it out. He's got bad dialogue. Done. Well, I, I, I've, read him, <laughs> I've read him pretty closely. No, he didn't have bad dialogue. He didn't have flashy dialogue. You, you should not confuse flashy dialogue with bad dialogue. Oh, I don't, buddy. I don't. One hundred percent, I don't. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, El Peo Peru says, Nick, you have to call him by his real name, Lima Bean. Uh, doxed, <laughs> doxed AF. Mandark says, Coach is wrong on trans. I'm a master's level therapist and have gender dysphoria myself. He is misinformed about the issues involved here. He's using debunked ideas and making incorrect statements on HRT for minors. Being trans doesn't mean you are unstable. So there you go. I so don't believe that with a 40% suicide rate. And the fact that you yourself are trans it makes it extremely suspect. It's like me taking advice about schizophrenia from a schizophrenic. Sorry, no. You have a your class of people that is transsexuals have a 40% suicide rate. Okay. The general population, I, I don't know what the general population suicide rate is, but it's I'm guessing like one or two percent or less, you know. So no, you you have no authority to to talk about this. Sorry, it depends no. if they're it's, it's out of hand. If they're dialogue writers for the prequels of Star Wars, maybe it should be uh, <laughs> maybe it should be high. No, I'm, jo I'm joking. In Minecraft, in Minecraft, that gets us in out Minecraft, of everything. Everything in Minecraft. There's yeah. no reality here. It's only Minecraft. The big red bear says, "Ow, can you wait? I think he means how. Can you not be a fan of? Oh yeah, yeah. How can you not be a fan of the orcs? Is you just some grot?" <laughs> Or is you just too runty to play the orcs? Uh, no, no, no. I'm just not. I, I don't like it. I don't like the boxy uh, look of the orcs. I like I like the the long lines of the Eldar for aesthetic. And I love the hilarity of the space marines. I just can't. I can't get away from it. Sorry. Sorry, orcs. No hate. Just no love. Colette Yamazaki says, was curious who CRP was. Looked into Godsend Reddit. And watched some of his, the older video, uh, older interviews, and other clips, and found it actually insightful. Feels a lot like unwarranted crap so far. Uh, there you go. Itchy there C. There you go. Thank you. I'm sorry. Who was that person? That was Colette Yamazaki. Colette, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, See, that that's an even-handed person. Okay, an open-minded person. Okay, and I appreciate that, and I'm sure you do too. That you, you want open-minded people who will look at the evidence and not just be, you know, guided by the baying of this, uh, you know, tyrannical minority. I yeah. like odd-handed people. Uh, to, so I have to disagree with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ichi Cinco Negro Saki says, "Kidding! You said you wish your hater would send you money. Uh, I do, I do. Thank you so much." Cast the cat says, "I didn't get the hate, but CRP." Trans equals schizo, WTF, uh, which you just you just addressed there. Um, yeah. Blaine twenty says failure to deny may be confused with assent. Uh, there, you, that's true. Schwanz Gruberman says any opinions on rum? I like Captain Morgan and Kraken, but looking for some better quality stuff. 
Do you drink rum? And if so, do you have any recommendations? I'm not a heavy rum drinker. I do have, uh, here we go, over on the shelf, I've got uh, three different, this is Mahina, and these two are different Kula rums, and I have a third bottle of Kula rum upstairs. But uh, those are all because I was on Maui at the distilleries and bought them. Um, they're good. I don't have recommendations on good rum, though. I just I bought those in Hawaii, and that's that's why. That, that toasted coconut Kula rum, if you're in Texas, I think you can buy it. And that stuff is actual magic. Uh, <laughs> that, stuff, know. that stuff's great. Uh, if you're in Hawaii, definitely buy it. Um, okay. Uh, the Texan 83 says Stanley or Veritas or generic big box store. That's about your smooth planer. Uh, oh. Stanley, but I adjusted it myself. Oh. I, I like, uh, uh, um, yeah, fix the frog because the Stanley design has uh, certain problems with the frog. And I sharpened the blade myself and, uh, yeah, and I adjusted it myself to, to really be like a, a good hand planer. Sure, sure. But it, uh, it's it's the, the small one. I forget the numbers, okay? Because so, I only have the one because it's the only one I really need because I have the 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 uh, the, the, the power planer uh, for the gross work, and then I use the the hand planer when I really want to get really fine. But yeah, I, I fixed it myself. Yeah. Someone in the chat says, "Nick, I'm not a rum drinker. Also, Nick, here are my five bottles of rum." Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta have variety in life, whether you drink it or not. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Dirk I just Lemon. Drink Cuba Libres, by the way. Yeah. You good. drink what? Cuba Libre. What is that? Uh, rum and Coke. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. And something else. I don't know what else it has. You uh, stop your. Wily yeah. Spanish uh, non-sensory in here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, just because I don't speak Spanish. That's the problem with everything. Ah. Uh, Dirk Limon says, so on a stream with the quartering, you didn't claim to have more assets than he did. He claimed low. Oh, that was embarrassing. That was an embarrassing. Don't even finish the, the thing. That was embarrassing. And I deeply regret that stream because I was dumb enough to get roped into a dick measuring contest with the quartering. Okay, that but was just an embarrassment on my part and something that I deeply regret because it's just, it's just embarrassing. I have uh, to, hold on, I have to body you here because uh, I I will finish the chat. Oh yeah, I, yeah, sorry. I sorry always, don't you dare, sir. Don't you dare, sir, sorry. tell me what to my, do. My, me bad. This me is bad. my me show. Bad. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh, he claimed low seven figures. Either you are lying or your cognitive function is falling, failing. Uh, so you were saying though that uh, that you got roped into you got roped into laying it out on the table with the rulers, right? That's what you're. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, never. Yeah, because, because it's just uh, you know, quartering and I do not get along. Yeah, that's oh. basically the, the the short and long of it. Well, have and, you ever? And, have you ever punched yeah. him outside of Gen Con? That would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, but you know, I, I I the quartering I find him. Well, it turned out that I was right about him. I said that he was just uh, you know, what he did a video where he actually uh, you know, on on camera where he pretended to drink Sargon of Akkad's semen, which is just bizarre. That's a weird. Uh, that's a weird flex. Yeah, that was a. Uh oh, very Sargon, and I correctly anticipated that going to Sargon and trying to get Sargon's audience before moving away, and that's exactly what the quartering did. He sucked off uh, uh, what you call it, Sargon's uh, audience, and then dropped Sargon and moved on to other bigger fish because uh, quarterings latch onto big YouTubers with uh, with videos that, that pander to that audience. And on to the night, he did it with Sargon. I think he was trying to do it with uh, with um, Philip DeFranco, but Philip DeFranco seemed to have shut him down. But, you know, that, that's that's his M.O., you know? Yeah, and I stupidly got into a dick measuring contest with him. And, uh, yeah, I deeply regret it, deeply embarrassing, but oh well, you know? Nothing I said to him was untrue. Well, but, I, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have gotten into that dick measuring contest. I get into all the measuring contests because I always win. Uh, that's <laughs> Taco Jones. Taco Jones says, I like CRP. He said some good things that I've never heard of or I never heard before at the time I needed to hear them. Good stream, Nick. Remember to thumbs up, people. Well, thank you. That's nicer thank than the you. people. Thank you. 
That's nicer than the people saying thumbs down. <laughs> uh, MGTOW's Revenge says, does CRP have an option? Uh, opinion. Wait, it says option, but I think it means opinion. On the growing ideology of MGTOW and the growing numbers distrusting the gynocentric system. That's a loaded question if I've ever seen. Would you yeah, pay my, that guy? My on, yeah, my, my thinking on MGTOW is that, see, um, you never want to be involved with any kind of ideology that, that uh, and, and follow it blindly. You always want to keep your eyes wide open and any kind of ideology. And you could say that MGTOW is a kind of ideology because it's men going their own way. And the whole notion is to eschew the company of women. Well, my, my thinking is um, you have to keep your eyes wide open. I also think that there are times in your life when you should go MGTOW, when you're focusing on your business or your career or what have you, and that women can be a big source of distraction. On the other hand, I recognize filled life does involve having a family. I mean, you're a family man, Nick. Uh, uh, you know, let me ask you, would you prefer to have been to be single today or have the family that you have? Oh, no, Which I do you prefer? I can't even pretend to imagine what what life would be like without uh, without the family that I have. Um, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't be a lawyer. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. I just yeah, that, well, that's a reality. My, my, yeah, my thinking is that sure. If I didn't have the family that I have now, I have two small children, right, and 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 a wife and the whole shebang. If I didn't have that family now, I'd probably be living, you know, footloose and fancy free. I'd probably be living in Japan or or some other place in Asia because I've I've been wanting to move there. Uh, but you know, my life, I think would be less fulfilling than it is and less happy than it is. So that, that's my, my thing. I also recognize that, see, on the daily grind of being a, a family man is, uh, you know, it's hard. It's a whole lot of hard work, but it's the, when you sort of like step back from the painting kind of thing that you get enormous satisfaction from it. And, and that's my feeling about it. Now, MGTOW, I don't have anything against MGTOW, but I think also that, uh, and I, like I said, I think that there are appropriate times to be MGTOW, but I do not think that it should be a, 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 a complete life. I mean, for forever and ever a world without end. Okay. Sure. And I also think that just by definition that you should never swallow any ideology whole. I that thought you, you were going to always... say semen. Oh my God. I thought Jeez. you were going back to the quartering thing. I was like, Jesus coach. <laughs> <laughs> uh Let's uh let's let's move on. Uh, Dubler says stop addressing everything, uh, then addresses criticism about addressing criticism. Yeesh, lol, keep up the good stuff, Coach. Uh, Doge Thank Meat you. Doge Meat says, did you delete the Worski doc? Uh, I think that's documentary, not document. Um, oh yeah, well, Andy Worski has said repeatedly that he will not give me any uh, permission to use footage of him. So I guess the, the documentary is never going to happen. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, Bagel Goose says, show toes, Coach Red Pill. Uh, so you're going to put your toes on stream? You got a toe no. measuring contest here? <laughs> no. What, you don't want your Wikipedia entry? <laughs> don't laugh like you don't know what Wikipedia is, Coach. I know you're looking at that all, all day long. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. Uh, did you know that Wikipedia is a thing? No. It's it a, is such a thing. You're you're fucking with me. I thought it was just no, a joke. No, that's a real thing. There's a wiki for feet. Wikifedia. The, yeah, the, uh, feet. Wikifedia. Yeah. So it's it's like oh, a catalog of feet of people. Um, that's hope, just bizarre. Hopefully they have mine on there. I I hope someone really enjoys it. Finn Frog says Nick, crackling cow crow is triggered and outraged, but he suggested that I pay you. You're welcome, crackling crow. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Vault Tech 2077 says, Oh man, got home from work and loaded up your stream, saw the words red pill, and I thought I was going to be a stream dedicated to dissecting the Matrix trilogy. Lights a candle on my Morpheus shrine. Someday, Lawrence, your day will come. Uh, Lawrence, no, we can do that. I, I'm a big fan of the Matrix uh, movie and the sequels. I think that they're garbage, but uh, yeah, we can talk about that okay. whenever you want. Do you, but do you, real quick, a 30 second answer. Do you think that the sequels exposed that the first matrix was a fluke uh and and changed the meaning of the first matrix so dramatically that it can't actually be good uh because the sequels uh, good, changed it good question good question no i think that uh you're, you're saying if the sequels were so damaging that it ruined the first film well that depends on each viewer my thinking is that they had more time to think through the first movie and the script was better 
but on the second and third picture, they were under they were obviously under so much strain and stress to deliver. And, and uh, you know, every, the studio, everybody must have saying, go, 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 go. And they didn't sit down, go away for a year to think over the script and make a better script. Yeah, I That's think my thinking. I think what I heard was they had five or nine years to write the first script and they had nine yeah. months to write the next two. Yeah, uh, exactly. Cast the cat says not trans. 40% suicide rate is pre HRT, not post. Okay. Uh, Blaine 20 says trans suicide rate doesn't change after op and or HRT stays 40%. So there's some argument with money involved there. Good job, guys. Uh, one is more than the other. So I have to believe that one. Mandark says, so by coach's logic, someone who has experienced on a topic, who has experience on a topic should be considered suspect. Oftentimes patients, if not just mental health fields, are more informed about their condition than their doctors. But we are supposed to trust your judgment. GTFO. Uh, so they, they're not happy with no, that. My, my thinking is that, see, there, there are uh, certain uh, mental disorders where, yeah, you, you can get insights from the patient uh, themselves. But there are, uh, but even the same uh, mental illness can lead the patient to say things that are delusional. So, you know, which can you trust? And you have to use your best judgment. Now, I, I just, no, I'm, I'm just not going to take the word for, for this condition from a transsexual who is in the grips of this ideology that, uh, you know, in time, in, in about five years, 10 years, everybody's going to wake up and say, holy shit, what the fuck were we thinking about? I mean, like back in the 70s, I remember everybody had a complete freak out over uh you know satanic baby rituals and that at the daycare centers they were like eating babies and such even though there was not one reported case of a missing child at some daycare center but a lot of them were saying oh yeah you know these daycare centers they eat children and they sexually molest all of them and they participate in these ritual sacrifices where the children are forced to cannibalize one of the ch kids there which is just crazy it's a mass delusion it happens all the time this transsexual stuff that's going on now, it's the same thing. You know, look, I know this shit because I've been around longer. Okay. I'm not smarter than anybody. I don't claim to be smarter than anybody or better educated, but I've seen shit like this before because I'm 51 fucking years old. Okay. This kind of mass delusion, I've seen it before. It's not unusual. Okay. People want to forget those mass delusions. But when everybody was living in the grips of them, yeah, they were going nuts. I mean, I remember the, the daycare stuff you know, in the late seventies and early eighties, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm yeah. going to tell you, I, I'm pretty sure my, uh, eighties daycare did eat babies because <laughs> that, you know what? Uh, my eighties daycare was garbage. Um, really, really traumatic. I can't eat jello to this day because of my eighties daycare. Uh, really? And, yeah. They force fed me jello until I vomited. And then Ew. they, then they forced me to clean myself up. I was like four. Oh. Uh, Jesus. yeah, they were, they were actually awful. My, my sister was in first grade and then would do daycare after school, um, or during the summers. And they, they actually had the first graders watch Cujo and purple rain. Um, oh God, you're yeah. kidding. So my, my sister was deathly afraid of dogs for like a decade sure. after watching Cujo. Uh, yeah, but people who don't know in chat, Cujo was a Stephen King uh, novel that was turned into a movie about this St. Bernard that became rabid and just started like eating people. It was just horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that honestly, that, uh, that daycare I went to, the only good thing was I met Chuck Norris because of that daycare. Uh, but, oh, really? but everything That's else is, cool. everything else is awful. Um, you met Chuck Norris. What was he like? Uh, well, I was, I was five, so he was fine. Oh. Uh, he he was he was Chuck Norris. I mean, of course, I think at the time I met Chuck Norris, I'd actually watched Delta Force <laughs> <laughs> and missing in action one or two at that point. Uh, but no, he uh, his friend had opened a karate studio right across the street from my daycare. And so we took a field trip as the daycare over to that. And Chuck came out to do an exposition uh, when it opened. And so Chuck and some of his some of his buddies were out doing a karate de uh, demonstration. And so I have a picture of me, my best friend at the time, my mom and Chuck Norris. She used to keep it on her desk and people would walk by her desk and they're like, oh my God, you're married to Chuck Norris? And she's like, no, no. Cause it looked like, you know, mom, dad and two kids, but uh, I'll have to find that picture. It's a, it's a great one. It's a great one. 
Um, cool. Anyway, uh, next, Jason Grootwees. I enjoy Coach and comment on his streams from time to time. He's like my father, who is an eight-trait narcissist, default Dutchman. That's a good thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, there you go. Jay says, both of you keep up your good work. I, I will try. Um, Thank you very much. I will too. Uh, KRI Headquarters says, Nick, can you tell these soy boys in the chat, that's capitalized, to suck a big toe and piss off? Never heard of CRB, uh, and it says CRB there, but he doesn't seem like a terrible person. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, uh, you you got to know me more, you know, and it will find out that I'm an evil, evil minion. Yeah, everything that my enemies say is true, you know. Yeah, well, there you go. If thank you, you very much for the kind words. If you don't think CRP is a terrible person, just, just check him out more and you'll find out the truth that he is. The Texan 83... <laughs> says, okay, woodworking legit. I hate power planes, though. Have Stanleys from number three to number eight. Uh, all right. I, Asia Frazier, says, everybody wants to cat wants to be a cat because a cat's the only cat who knows where it's at. Everybody's picking up on that feline beat because everything else is obsolete. That's in music notes, but I don't know the tune. I'm not going to sing that. Sorry. Uh, Ampathos guy says, I think I sent it to the correct ones. Hashtag bad memory. Uh, oh, that's for the emails. Sounds good. I'll look for it. Doge Meat says one four eight gang gang kick CRP. Uh, he's like half the world away. Kicking him would be difficult. Um, I'm not. What 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 do you think I am? Dalsim? My leg doesn't stretch like that. <laughs> Dirk Limon what, says. What do you think you are? You know Chuck Norris? No, Dalsim. Chuck would be able to do it. Chuck Coach, play it. play a video game once in your life. Dalsim, Dalsim has stretchy appendages. No, I, I actually play two video games. I play uh, Tetris and I play Dots. Okay, you should play Street Fighter 2 and check out Dalsim because he could kick oh. you from across the globe. <laughs> uh. Uh, Dirk Limon says, Is it not odd that Coach Beta Bill can dish out the banter and insults but can't take simple questions? If you're such a wise businessman, why couldn't you scrounge up 7,500 or obtain a business loan? Uh, do you want to answer that or no? Yeah, sure. Well, on, on so far as the publication of the book, uh, I decided that, well, I'm, it costs like altogether like a budget of 15,000 and I'm putting up half of that. And the other half, I figured I'd do it through Indiegogo for two reasons. Number one, people thought it was a good idea and it could offset my expenses. Number two, uh, people are going to be getting the product you know it's sort of like a pre-sale of the book and such you know because like you can get the uh audio book the ebook and all that and it's on top of that it'll be sent to you before the general public so there's a service being rendered there by the indiegogo and uh so i i don't see what the problem is and how, there's something else i've noticed see how do you make money by you know conserving it by conserving it and and husbanding it and you don't leave, like leave money on the table you don't leave money uh, lying around uh, people seem to think that oh if you have money then you should uh, you know just squander it which is bizarre i i don't understand that uh all the uh, all the the self-help books and all the rest of it they all say that one of the consistent habits of people who uh do well with money is that they take care of it you know and i certainly do i i pinch my pennies Hell yeah. You know, like uh, when I fly somewhere, you know, I make sure that I get the best deal. I, I go to several sites. It takes me five, 10 minutes to go to different websites to get the best deal. Why shouldn't you? I mean, if you have like, say, for the sake of argument, you have $5,000 for a vacation, right? And your, your plane ticket is going to cost you a thousand. Uh, and you have the money, of course, to go. But why aren't you going to like look around and, and hunt a little bit and see if you can get that down to say 800? I mean, why give away 200 bucks? I, I don't understand. I don't understand why you're, you're supposed to just be frivolous and foolish with your money that has cost you so much to husband. You, you see what I'm saying? I don't understand that. I don't understand that attitude at all. Well, there you go. That's a good answer to the, uh, to the question, I think. Sponge says, press S to spit on coach, the smooth-brained windbag. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, Zool, there is no Dana, only Zool. Never heard of CRP, but based on this, seems okay to me. Chat is Thank pulling. You. Chat is pulling a kick, Vic. Thanks, Nick, for not caving to keyboard warriors. Uh, you're welcome, I guess. Uh, Blaine, 
Blaine 20 says, if anyone watching has any connections with any Vic friendly conventions hosting com convention hosting companies in Florida, please get in touch with me at real Blaine 20 on Twitter. Hashtag stand with Vic. Uh, Christopher Nelson says, I told someone in chat that I am probably the oldest person here, but he said he bets CRP is older. How old are you CRP? You said you're 51, 51. right? Just turned 51. Yes. There you go. Uh, Dave HZ says, but see, I'm older than you though. Cause each child adds five years. Um, <laughs> so, and I was born leap year. So I'm actually, uh, you're like what, four. I'm, uh, 13. <laughs> no, I'm 12. I'm 12. I'm 12. Uh, my, my grandma was born on leap year and she just passed away. I think she was, I think she finally got old enough to drink, um, right before passing. Dave HZ says, Nick, have you noticed you felt the need to make clear you're joking way more than usual? What's that about? Uh, I, I don't know if that's a conscious thing, um, but it might be the liquor. It might be the liquor. And uh, that wraps up our super chats. It's uh, it's coming close to that. No, refresh. I think there are a few more. No, there's there's not. I don't I don't think so. I've got them all. Uh, that's the most recent one. Oh, wait, there's one. No, there's two more. You're right. You're right. Uh, video game snake. Why didn't my thing update? Video game snake says, honestly, CRP has not been honest in his claims. He has said okay. on camera that he was a millionaire. He has been caught enjoying traps. Just rude to Nick. <laughs> what? Okay. How, how, how many traps have you enjoyed? <laughs> how many traps have I enjoyed? Zero, but okay. Okay. But how many traps did you not enjoy? Yeah, I caught you in my <laughs> lawyer ways right there, buddy. <laughs> uh, I Asia Frazier says, it was from Aristocats. I was being random. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay, that is all of the Super Chats according to my Streamlabs. I think that's it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, that's that's where we are. We're right coming up to that 2 a.m. time where I like to wrap up a stream. So, Coach, I will give you some closing thought time. If you want to say anything else, if you want to remind people of the book, what do you what do you want to talk about, buddy? Well, I want to uh, talk to people about the book. Uh, yeah. In the sense that you know, th this is the Indiegogo campaign that Nick has uh, linked below. You know, I, I think that uh, people will enjoy it. And by the way, there are two videos there that you will see where I read excerpts from the book. OK, so you can get a sense of what it feels like, what it's about, how it goes, you know, and it's a fun read. That's what it's supposed to be. And the other point I wanted to make is that, see, I, I'm going to be I'm already writing the next book. It's going to be actually a nonfiction book, uh, you know, about talking about a little bit the current scene. And it's just for me, it's. Um, it, it's really interesting how the, uh, the the gatekeepers of the culture have been co-opted by people who are, they have a, an agenda and they are more than happy to keep out people who are actually talking about things. And I think it turns towards the issue of politics because, see, I, I do not like how Donald Trump has handled his presidency so far. I think it's been a bit of a disaster. But see, his, his basic critique, which I think the most important speech he gave was when he accepted the Republican nomination. And he talked about the problems in the United States. And everybody you know, tried to say, oh, that's not true. That's not how it is, blah, blah, and just try to paper over it. And that's the thing that we're having. We have a lot of problems in our society. And a lot of the elites, the gatekeepers, the, the people who control the Democratic and the Republican Party, the people who control the MSM, all those people, they, they seem hell-bent for leather on silencing any naysayer, from silencing people who say the emperor has no clothes, from silencing people who are trying to tell the truth about the current situation. You know, nobody's talking about the debt disaster with students and how catastrophic it is and how it only helps uh, college administrators. They're the ones who are benefiting. But students, they're getting screwed. They're getting saddled with debt. That Do you know the average time it takes to pay off the student loans? 21 years. 21 years of student loans. Sure. And what does that mean? It, it warps your decisions insofar as your life. You decide to postpone having your first home. You decide to postpone having your first child. And when a woman postpones her first child, instead of having a first child in her late, mid, late 20s, 
she decides to have her first child in her early 30s. Well, she's not going to have be able to have all the children she wants. She might only be able to have a single child or maybe no children at all, because it could be that, you know, her window passed and, and she's no longer able to conceive and she no longer and she doesn't have the money for any kind of uh, IVF, you know, in vitro fertilization program. Right. This is cat catastrophic and nobody's talking about this. And this is a serious problem. Right. And, and it, 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 it drives me nuts that the uh, elites who dominate the discourse are doing this, are silencing any kind of conversation about these problems that are serious, right? And so the, the fact that as an independent writer, uh, you know, outside of the mainstream, I'm able to do that. And I have the opportunity to get people to read my work that talks about these issues. I mean, like in the novel in Wilshire Boulevard, you read it, right? Yep. All of the kidnappers. Well, most of them. They're, they're, yeah, they're guys with student loan problems. That's their problem. Or or one of them is is a guy who got involved in some stupid shit, and now he has a criminal record, and he can't get out from under it. He can't even get a job as a garbage man because he's a felon, right? Right. And so – and and he's an educated guy. He's got a master's in science, and he can't get a job, right? Uh, you know, these are problems that are not being discussed, and that's why I'm going all in on the self-publishing thing. And I'm planning on doing two books a year. I'm doing this book in this first semester of 2019, and I'm going to come out with another book at the second semester of 2019 and moving forward because somebody has to be talking about the things that really matter because right now nobody is. And that is what drives me crazy about the elite society, the, 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 the people in New York and L.A. and Washington. They are not talking about the problems facing people. And, and I think that we should do that. And I think that that's why I like your show, Nick, because you're bringing people on to talk about things that the rest of society is not. And, and it should be spoken of, you know. Right. And it's usually it's usually traps that we're talking about. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, there are, there are four super chats. So thank you for those final thoughts. Let me read these super chats and let's, uh, let's close out. I will ask you, uh, to hang out with me. Cause I like to, I like to say goodnight to the chat. And then I like to say goodnight to my guests, uh, in private after the show. Um, oh, that, that sounds very lascivious, but okay. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. Yeah. I said you're never mind. Uh, John, John says, love. Traps are gay. Traps are gay. <laughs> John says, love both you guys. Being a man means standing up for your morals. The fact that you will not apologize for your comments means you are a man, in my opinion. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. J Mac Von Kaze says, $5. Just say, I love you in your stream, Nick. Keep up the good work. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, Video Game Snake says, never answered about claiming to be a millionaire. Uh, do you have any final answer for claiming to be a millionaire, coach? Well, I, I think that uh, my slip of the tongue with, uh, with uh, what's his name, uh, a quartering was my mistake and I'll just have to live with it. But I'm not going to discuss my personal finances. Well, there you go, chat. That's the answer for you. Sam, every man says, CRP talking, turn my weed into lettuce. <laughs> 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 oh, come on. Uh, I'm pissed. This is a good one. That is the I'm harshest pissed. burn all night. That by far, that was good. Who, who said that one? You should give that guy a prize. That was a good one. Uh, that was Sam Everyman. That was very good. Uh, and, very good, Sam Everyman. And Mimaru Dolphy, it's in the description, Wilshire Boulevard, and you can find the link there. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. You know, if you like what Coach has to say, check out his channel, check out his book. If you hate what Coach has to say, check out his channel, check out his book. Uh, see, if, see if you just hate him here or if you hate him everywhere. Um, that's, yeah, uh, good, good approach. Good approach. That's what we, that's what we do. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, look for early in the day, a 15, 10 to 15 minute video, uh, about the Vic Mignogna situation and new, new information that, uh, has come to light. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I can't, uh, I can't be too specific. Just know that I've been talking to some very interesting people. Uh, in all parts of this industry, and I've gotten some good info on it. Uh, and check that out. And then tomorrow night, I will be expanding upon what is in that video, uh, plus maybe some other shenanigans as well. Thank you all for joining me. To all the new subscribers, thank you so much. And uh, thank you to my guest, Coach. And uh, you guys have a fantastic night. Thank you. Thank you.